my heart no boo. some fun now man Oh man, look at that backdrop. There is not a cloud in the sky, but we're gonna make some of our own. That's right, we are here at UMC, Utah Motorsports Campus, just outside of Salt Lake City, Utah, playing at one time, the longest racetrack in the U.S. Then uh, it was at Spring, Spring Mountain uh, Motorsport and Country Club. This is the Touring Items Type S Elevated event presented by AutoZone. Again, it is playing host to not only last night, congratulations, Ben Hobson, your 2023 Link Engine Management Prospect Champion. He also won the event, Rookie of the Year, talking about Mr. Cole Richards. Uh, a great event yesterday, but uh, again, that was Casual Friday. We're kicking things up. This is round seven of the Formula Drift Pro Championship. I'm Jared Dienda. I'll be your tour guide. Joining me here is Jacob Gittin while the Gittin's good. Did I say that right? I like it. No, it's okay. perfect. You landed that's it. What, that's what you wanted. Grantsville, Utah, we're up in the building, the glass box of emotions. Well, we're out in the patio. Um, you know, as uh, we are getting prepared here, also are the spotters of their respective drivers. Jacob, host of the Outer Zone podcast. If you not listened to that and you are a Formula Drift fan, you are missing out. You get some sweet little nuggets, some insight, uh, also some perspective on either their career, where they're at, where they're going, and kind of 
kind of just some cool stuff. So, Jacob, you're doing a great job in Outer Zone, man. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, it's, it's an absolute pleasure to get to do it. And I always like to find, like, one or two weird little questions to ask them, you know, get a hold of their parents, get some, like, get some, get some real, you know, fun ones in there. Well, uh, again, you can see uh, our GoPro Hero 12 Black in the air right now. And uh, you can go check out the brand new others. Oh, Ryan Sage right here, president and co-founder of Formula Drift. Brian Eggert, uh, Ravi Nishida, and Ryan Lontane are judges here for this event. But uh, if you're here in the building, be sure to go by the GoPro booth, pick up the Hero 12 Black debut just this week. $200 in savings, bundle pack, really cool. Check that out. Also, the uh, Momo Forge Star booth over there, fun haver, so many things to do and uh, see here as we're just warming things up here with our top 32. All right, so uh, speaking of our 32, what an event we have. And uh, again, we talk about the GoPro, the race for the championship. Chelsea Denofa wins two events this season. Frederick Osbo, he's three-time champion, right? He goes back-to-back -back most recently here in 21-22. A few years ago, he won his third, or his first championship of the three. But uh, Odie Bakshi's two cars in the top five. Odie and Simon Olsen's and navigating those. James Dean, who sits in sixth, mathematically a long shot towards the championship. But uh, Dylan Hughes, Ryan Turk, Forsberg, RCP rounding up our top ten. So uh, again, a little bit of disruption here. Vaughn Gittin Jr. He has, you know, he split the season, but. Walk us through, what, were, what what did you bring into Long Beach, Jacob? What was your idea? What did you think was going to happen? Matt Field winning? Yeah, I mean, the redemption. Matt Field, all he wanted was to make up for what had happened last season. He came out with a bang, and that's what we saw. And then round two, how serendipitous, sentimental. I mean, I love this. I cried. Uh, I don't know if you caught that. I know Ryan Sage did. But here in 2004, this all began 20 years ago. Vaughn and Forsberg during the finals. Well, Chris won in 04. Vaughn, one in 2023, a split season with Adam LZ. He's continuing the rest of this season behind the wheel of the car. Then it was RTR, three in a row. Chelsea Nova put it down in O-Town against Osbo, that three-time champion. Yeah, incredible event. You know, Chelsea, kind of a hometown hero there and just absolutely crushing everybody along the way. It was beautiful, and he drove like a madman yeah. the entire time. Yeah, Chelsea Denova. Then we went to E-Town, the first ever purpose-built Drift Coliseum, and it was Adam LZ. You know, Adam LZ is currently in Poland right now, competing at Drift Masters. But uh, Adam LZ, talk about disruption. RTR, I'm going to stick my Mustang in the mashed potatoes. That's what Vaughn Gittin Jr. did with the split season. Adam LZ is it right there. Simon Olsen in second. The smile on Simon's face, even though coming up second, he still had something to prove. And then as we go into St. Louis, I mean, Olsen, you're looking at, Reg, uh, excuse me, yeah, Fred, Frederick Osbo, but it was Odie Bakshi who ended up coming out on top. Yeah, it, it's it's amazing what Odie's been able to do on that entire team and seeing Simon get into that car, fish the water, took over, yeah. has been driving. Just, it just so, so incredibly well. And then you see here just Odie, that the pressure comes off and, and gets that win, it's, it's amazing. All right, now we make our way into, uh, I mean, I love Atlanta, that's probably number one. Seattle has become my favorite number two track. The people, the track, the weather, the vibes, the beer, the food, that PNW essence, I love it up there. And Chelsea Denofa, again, really showed up in spades. Just such a dynamic track, high speed entry, the grit, the porousness of it. It eats up those tires, whatever respective brand you're running. Look at those Ford star wheels of Dylan Hughes go in to Chelsea Denofa. Chelsea ended up getting the victory. Congratulations to him. James Dean got his first ever Mustang podium there. What a season it's been, and it's gonna come down to Irwindale once again. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 been it's been amazing to see RTR dominance, but then you see the Odie Bakshi's camp coming in, and, and Frederick Osbo still in play. Like it, it's gonna, it's really everything that happens today is so vital to this championship that as much as everything comes down to Irwindale, this is gonna set the stage for what we see in a couple of weeks. And how impactful would that be? You know, here's James Dean, who's really hitting his stride. He says, I mean, he, you know, he's behind the wheel of an FDR X7, he's behind the wheel of a Eurofighter. You know, all, all across the globe, not just exclusively in Europe or. Ireland, but he's piloting so many different vehicles coming here and uh, Von Gittin Jr. tapping him and says, hey, come on over here. I got a car for you full time, eight rounds. It's been really tremendous for James Dean, especially now at a track that really suits his style. 
Um, there's a lot of conversation and dialogue about judging how simple this track is. It's not that simple. What might look like a blank slate is very difficult. And, and James talked about that even in the driver's meeting. You know, bringing drivers over here. We'd love to see everybody in the world come over here. But again, Dinopo leads a pack, third place qualifier. Yeah, Chelsea really was able to showcase his style and how he can hold angle. He was so controlled all the way through qualifying. You know, crazy entry, Simon Olsen, same thing. Just calculated, so incredibly calculated. He's, he's showing that everybody coming out of Norway just has this ability to set a line and drive to that line. And, and we've never seen a better Simon Olsen, second place in qualifying. Full throttle through the entire course. Triple digit speeds on entry. You hammer it down, locked and loaded. Boom, look at this. Rate to angle, very quick, but minimal corrections. Look at those front wheels. A little correction in there, that first outside zone. Get in the second one, set it and forget it. That's just a phrase that keeps coming up, and that is absolutely what James Dean did. James Dean, three time Formula Drift champion in that last outside zone. Boom, goes the machine, and that's why they call him that. But now he is really, you know, He's going for it. I, I think knowing James, he's very humble. He's very appreciative. But I think that he's like, oh, now now this this is a reality. And uh, we know he's one of the best, you know, head-to-head -head drivers in the biz. This is how the top 32 bracket's shaping up. We can see James Dean going against Taylor Hall, um, seeing him and his wife, Pose talking about, all right, we're feeling it. You know, a little bit of hiccups to this and there. We'll see how that ends up. Simon Olsen, he's got Nick Novak, Denopa, got Mike Power, so on and so forth. You can see it, a lot of cool battles. Any other battles stand out to you as far uh, as a... Uh, yeah, we got history ooh, between Chris Forsberg and Forrest Wang, mm -hmm. Odie Bakshis, <laughs> Odie Bakshis and Von Gittin Jr. Uh, I mean, Ryan Literal qualifying fifth, taking on Ryan Turk, who called Yeah, Turk down, in, down there. That's what I'm saying, this is gonna be nuts. Brandon Sorensen, Roan Charpentier, Rome, brand new engine, actually old engine from ooh. last year, back in the car. Guys driving overnight to get it here all the way, uh, overnight parts from California. Yep, but yep. yeah, there's a lot of great battles in here. Uh, I mean, even looking at Dan Stuckey, Robert Thorne, two guys, you know, that can really throw down. There's there's so much. This top 32 is going to be incredible. Another one, Trent Beecham, his best qualifying, qualifying 10th. Yeah. He's, you know, him and his team, he, he placed the bet, he qualified 10th. So uh, he's got he's got a prize from yeah. one of his uh, team, team managers and owners. Christoph Blue, she's back in the building, the Latvian lover. The HGK Eurofighter, he's a he's definitely a force to be reckoned with. So getting the band back together, really excited about uh, about what we're gonna see and how it's gonna unfold here. So uh, again, knockout qualifying results. You saw that Dean Olson and Denofa. Uh, congratulations to Cole Richards, our 2023 Rookie of the Year, and again our 2023 champ, our winner yesterday here, round four, the final round of the Link Engine Management Prospect Championship. That's Ben Hobson. Walk us through, you know, the, the judges have, have said, they said, look, we're not going to tell you where the diesel, diesel zones are. Run it, flow it, do it. Inside clip one, outside zone one, two, massive. Fill that, fill as best you can, outside zone three. The big factor and the elephant in the room is more so no vision in the room, the smoke. Yeah, and, and they've actually removed an inside clip between two and three to allow the drivers to kind of change up where they're going to transition to get out of the smoke either earlier and they're, the other thing that we've set up is is this crane with the big American flag on it. So they have somewhere to reference. There's cones now, like a three, two, one coming yeah. into Outer Zone two to give more reference. So the the track has changed in a way to help the drivers, give them more vision, and hopefully make for just insane tandem all day. It's it's going to be really really crazy. Let's take a look at our KN Keys to Victory KN, the official air filter of Formula Drift. Quick to angle, you saw that from James Dean. Decel after transition for outer zone two. So again, boop, boop, you're gonna have this natural decel because you're putting the car at angle. Back on throttle quickly in outside zone two. Fill all the zones, obviously get it in there, right into that course edge. Don't exceed it, don't put one into the gravel or onto that rumble strip. Big transitions, meaning, you know, if you throw a gangster transition up front, that's really gonna kind of throw off that chase car. And when we get to the keys to victory for the chase, the biggest one for me is position your car in the pocket. Not only is that impressive to the judges, but also you're gonna maximize your vision because if you get properly in the pocket, you're not just gonna get buried in the smoke. Would you agree with that? Yeah, amongst those if, other keys? If you can get the front wheels just behind the other driver's front wheels, kind of into that door, you're out of the smoke line, so you're able to see, you're able to see the entire time and hopefully anticipate what they're gonna do. All right, click, click. Who's gonna get the win? Uh, I'm gonna stick with Trent Beecher, man. I'm, I've, I, Be you said he, it. You know what? I said it yesterday. I'm gonna hold. I'm gonna hold on to it. I like it. Yeah. All right. Well, play for pay. FD for cash. Make your pick. Scan that QR code. Here you go. I'm gonna do it so it's kind of real time. Uh,
Uh, I can't bet because uh, obviously you know, people, people call me the fourth judge. But uh, yeah, okay, you shut your mouth. My director's in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> he, I know, I know who he likes. But again, he's just on the production side. He could do it. But again, um, play FD for cash. Love this great introduction here. And uh, I hope y'all, uh, hot moms out there, were cheering on Hobson uh, because he, uh, he, you know, Alabama, Alabama B-boy is is popped in the building. He. Uh, you know, he won at 16. Lorette asked him yesterday, what, what do you, you know, congratulations, you're the champion. He says, well, we're still in it, and we got more work to do. And work he did. He got the championship, but he also got the win. There's his pops, there's Simon, there's Cody, and he continued on his success. Rudy Hansen thought he had his number like he did earlier this year. Not the case. Not the case here in Utah. It favored Hobson over Hansen. Yeah, Ben Hobson, uh, it is incredible to see what he has been able to do in this car. He is almost picture perfect every event. You get, you see the strange bobbles here and there, but realistically, Ben Hobson just crushed this season out. Big point spread. Here's his battle here with Cole Richards. It was amazing. These guys just went out and they left. They realized, like, hey, we don't need these cars anymore. We're just going to run this as much as we can. And Cole Richards picking up Rookie of the Year. Yeah, that yeah. was that was really cool. Good for him. A little bit of delay there yesterday. His radiator gets punctured. Uh, we allow time it was it was crazy kind of turn of events but i'll tell you what ben hobson absolutely stoked you know he's on the box a, a few times yesterday up and down reeking of champagne and uh I, i'm sure he's he's in the stands today cheering on our pro driver so thank you to our fd staff that's here in the building including our judges this year we have implemented four judges only three are behind and scrutinizing the other driver or excuse me the other judge is assisting the uh, driver steward and that's sean adriano but thank you to brian eggert ryan lontane robin ishida chris yule's out of rotation chris yule will see up in the judges stand in irwindale so you ready to do this jacob i'm ready let's go all right man well again uh Kind of had you in and out for uh, previous events, but obviously we yesterday we did qualifying together, and uh, it's great to have you up here for 32. Just FYI, Ryan Sage will be joining me here in the booth after the halftime break, 16, till we find out who gets the win. James Dean, Taylor Hull. James Dean, number one qualifier, Taylor Hull, just getting that final spot. And keep in mind, Mula Yeager, shout out to him, Japan Auto, that Mark IV Supra, unfortunately just outside. 33 drivers came in, only 32 in the main event. Hopefully we'll see Ula Yeager at Irwindale. So here we go, we're ready to send it for the first time here. Pro, second ever time here at Utah Motorsports Campus. Who's gonna get the win here today? James Dean, again, number one qualifier. That AutoZone Mustang RTR. Taylor Hole, that Comp Cam's Kenna Tires Corvette. Now coming in, Wild Willie's his beard's looking sharp. Let's see how his line is. Now, James Dean, the machine going that second outside zone. Taylor Hole needs to gain some ground. James Dean, look at that, right on that course edge. Putting that tire right where it needs to be. Taylor Hall diving on the inside. That transition, you saw the car grip up, but James Dean seems that he is just right there in the mix. So uh, again, James, doing, James Dean, I mean, that almost looks like his qualifying run. Yeah, James did, threw down an absolute monster lead run here. And you can see Taylor in the back trying to keep up with it. Those RTRs are so incredibly fast. And then you watch Taylor kind of pull a little bit more angle to get more proximity there and overshoots a bit of outside zone one. Meanwhile, James Dean out front laying it down. Taylor Hall doing everything he can to get back in the pocket here as they come around two. Does a good job in the transition, but comes out of the smoke a little bit early and gets back in the pocket. It is going to take a little bit here for uh, for Taylor to get this, James is going to have to do something kind of crazy in the chase for, for him to get that win. But here's the thing, anything can happen. So Taylor does need to clean it up a little bit more, but he has been doing a great job out in the lead. So I have no doubt that uh, James is going to still have some work cut out for him chasing Taylor uh, as they swap things up. All right, so uh, again, analyzing our judges, scrutinizing these runs. We are in the Rockstar Energy Drink, top 32. Rockstar Energy, the official energy drink of Formula Drift. Also, again, this is the Type S event, so if you're here in the building, be sure to visit the Formula Drift merchandise trailer and the Type S booth. We have special deals going on, the uh, Pro Series PSL Underglow. We got built-in USB-C cable jump starter packs. We got signature Larry Chen lights, you know, our, fav our favorite photographer, uh, 360 LED video light and power bank. Look at RT. So we kick things off with Matt Field. RTR, RTR, RTR. Little Odie flavor for you. Chelsea Nova, RTR. Four out of the six wins 
are with RTR at the top of the box, those Ford Mustangs. And again, keep in mind, Vaughn Gitt Jr. split in the season with Adam LZ, Chelsea and James. So Chelsea Nova, points leader, and James Dean the entire eight seasons. But Vaughn finishes out the season. Uh, we've got the win in Atlanta. Now here he is in Utah, and we'll see him again in Irwindale. All right, here we go. Run two, Taylor Hole out front. Love to see him with that clean air. Just get a little tighter run out there. We saw him shoot on the inside. James Dean, we know what he is capable of, especially given he was our number one qualifier. So this track suit him well. Taylor Hole needs to put down a heater run with James Dean. A little, we saw a little bit of failure loss there. I want to take a look at different. Oh, look at that. He's, he's bowing out. That's, that is a respectable, wow. respectable move. Unfortunately for Taylor Hole, again, that's what I was talking about. You know, it, it's my camera putting up a post. James doesn't even need to complete this run. I think this is smart of him to, you know, get more familiar with the track. Yeah. But again, Taylor and Tamara put up a post saying, a little bit of gremlins, figuring out. Oh, what do we got? A little bit of flames. Let's make sure uh, we got, yep. Yeah. Okay, yep. Let's, let's get that. Let's get that out there. Yep. Get on out. Seeing a bit of smoke coming out yep. of the wrong places. Be careful, boys. Be careful. Again, that cop cams, Kenda Tires, Wild Willies, Edelbrock, Taylor Hull just putting his hand up and bowing out, saying, uh, you know what, got some issues, know when to fold them. All right, well, unfortunately for Taylor, worked hard, but uh, just had to, uh, had, to pull, had to pull the shoot. Yeah, just wasn't meant to be on this round. So there it is. James Dean taking the rest of that run for some more practice yeah. before he... Uh, it's there in it. Is. The right hand drive, mind you, the all yeah. new seventh gen Ford Mustang. Let's make it official. James Dean gets the win. James Dean gets the win and advances on. So, uh, on initiation, you saw Taylor Hull, like I said, kind of failure to launch. You saw hesitation, goes to initiate, uh, uh, little hiccups, and then throws his hand up and says, hey, I'm. I'm I'm just gonna exit stage right over here and uh, let you finish it out. And when that lead car has that mistake, the chase car is impeded. So see that, you see? Yep, there and it is right now. His hand just throws it up. Yeah, and at, at the speeds they're going at, going into this initiation, if you really, if you initiate like two feet too late, that's it, you're gonna shoot oh, yeah. through. So, you know, you, know, you never wanna see anybody uh, go out like that, but at least there was no collisions. We have no damage. He's able to, you know, take that car, clean it up a little bit more. And, See him, uh, see him in a few weeks? See you in Irwindale. Yep. Yeah, about a month, about a month. Yeah, if you haven't purchased your tickets, I'll tell you what, act now because October 13th and 14th. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Utilizing our GoPro Hero 12 Black. Be sure to visit 3 o'clock. They're giving one out. So if you're in the building, you can't enter, Jacob. Uh, Come on. <laughs> you know better than that. But, uh, again, the GoPro, uh, the GoPro booth, head on over there. And uh, let's ride along with Simon Olson, fifth in points, pilot of that field suspension, pedal commander, Enos Oil vehicle. Let's ride along with our uh, Type S course preview. Hi, this is Simon Olson. We're here at Formula Drift Round 7 at the Utah Motorsport Campus, and this is the Type S course preview. All right, so we're rolling up to the start line giving Matt Sofa a knuckle and then start in second gear and take off. Rolling through the chicane, floored, third, fourth, flash tires, initiate, slide on curbs, full throttle, passing inner clip one, reaching outer zone one, transition quick e-brake into two and then on full throttle throughout the whole zone, stay wide, Quick transition over to three and floor it through outer three, all the way through. And there you have it. And at the end, you have a big
Jeff Jones here. I'm Dylan Hughes. I'm Travis Reeder. I'm Ken Gooshin. I'm Matt Field. I drive late. They are the most reliable EC around, and they always deliver. Their global tech support gives me the advice I need every time I need it. Their products are super easy to install and easy to set up for the performance that I want. They stand behind their products and support their customers. They're always innovating and delivering great new products and performance features. I drive. I drive. I drive. I drive. I drive Link. Well, you can see the hot pits right there. As we we're talking yesterday at Prospect, you see a lot of tents. It starts dwindling down, but getting all the scoops down there. I know you're well rested. You're feeling spunky. You're feeling the heat. Speaking of the heat, what's cooking down there? Lorette Nickel, another member of broadcast team. Lorette. Well, thanks, Jared. Yeah, the heat hasn't been rising from the track yet, but it is coming. And Chelsea Genofa is turning the heat up slowly. But you said this morning things weren't aligning for you. So how do you get everything back on track? Yeah, you know, sometimes you wake up, you have a rough morning, but you can for sure. And that's in a couple changes. Get my car with our first lead lap and attitude for the weekend. Okay. So how do you feel this track? This track is big and it requires a lot of power. And the car is a little bit more down on power than some cars just because we're naturally upgraded. So, you know, it's a little bit of a struggle playing the power game. Really good guys. Dialing and in the best, best car. Possible. Now, a lot of people talk about how your cars are some of the highest. Um, you said it was down just. With that. Yeah, the altitude, which puts us probably mid to lower. Guys with the turbo actually makes them here. Or, you know, we're still there. We're in the race. There's no advantage, let's say, for sure. Okay. All right. Well, Chelsea, thank you so much for your time. We're coming out of Seattle to do that again here in Utah. Best of luck, Chelsea. Thanks. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll uh, get some more insight there and uh, throughout the day. You can see the RTR vehicles, Chelsea, Vaughn in the middle, little Vaughn sandwich, and James Dean, who is advancing into the top 16. Those RTR vehicles definitely force to be reckoned with. You can see the Toyota Camp Rockstar Energy vehicles. You can follow the their series called Controlled Chaos, debuting on Mav TV just the other night. So be sure to check that out, season two, and that uh, that is showcasing the season last year and then coming into this season and uh, what's at stake there for Frederick Osbo, as we do know. Uh, but uh, it's good to see that insight, the different perspective, Jacob, like like your podcast does. You get all these different perspectives. I always talk about that at the end of the year which we're going to celebrate prospect drivers tonight. But my perspective of Formula Drift is always up here in the announcer's booth. I've never been down the line, obviously never been behind the wheel of a Formula Drift vehicle, but perspective, man. And that's what I love about these kind of documentaries like Controlled Chaos, like what all the content creators are making, including Chris Forsberg, Forrest Wang. Chris is doing a really good job. He's got his team on three media. They're, uh, they're documenting things. You got uh, Victoria. She's throwing out some cool stuff, uh, Vital Vision. So um, yeah, there's a lot of different people, but uh, these guys always seem to go against each other <laughs> they've, they've, they've squashed it you know and, and you know they just they just want to win at the end of the day now but perspective yeah i mean they're they're both incredible drivers um both with kind of different styles too which is interesting and maybe that's why they've clashed before but I'm sure it's all water under the bridge now yep. and i'm just excited for a really good battle watching a lot of uh, forrest wang's driving today seeing how he's able to adapt his style some cool transitions and that's the big thing that i'm 
waiting and excited to see and, and see how Chris adapts to that as well. Yeah, and Chris, you know, he's he's obviously a three-time champion for a reason. They both, you know, taking a look at the numbers statistically, you can see Chris qualifying 16th, Force Wayne qualifying 17th, so it was fairly equally matched here. And Chris was just, you know, he is he is a day oneer. He is, you know. Von Kitten Jr. is just a bit outside. Ryan Turk is just Ryan Turk is just a bit outside. And I say Vaughn because he did take that year hiatus last year, so let's all call it a year and a half off. Um, but the two remaining drivers since day one, 20 years competing, Ken Gushi and Chris Forsberg. So yes. we'll see. Uh, again, Chris will lead. He did just barely out-qualify Forrest Wang. Chris Forsberg ripping that NOS energy drink, all new 370, excuse me, all new Z um, as the 370Z being piloted by Alex Jager and Prospect, but the all new Z, NOS energy drink, you see Magnaflow, GT radials on the corner, and then the yellow speed racing, Get Nuts Laboratory, Forrest Wang and that S15, 2J under the hood, the VR under the hood of Forsberg's vehicle. Happy to see the giant wing back on, on Wang's car. I'm, 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 I'm a big, big wing fan, gang. Yeah, big, big wing fan. Okay, here we go. Chris Forsberg will lead, Forrest Wayne giving chase. Let's see how they manage going into this first inside clip. Big angle there from Forsberg, just a little bit more than Forrest Wang now dialing in in that first outside zone. You can see Forrest Wang trying to navigate through that smoke. Forsberg gets out to that second outside zone. You see Forrest Wang getting a little bit closer in proximity. A little bit tighter of a line. Now Forsberg going to the outside, last outside zone. Forsberg getting into the dirt. And that allows Forrest Wang to gain that proximity and get to the side of him. So uh, that's, that just shows that really good composure by Forrest Wang, not getting affected by Chris dropping that back right tire, but Chris pushing for it. He knows he's right there. And again, you know, Forrest Wang, that big angle style. But I'll tell you what, Forsberg had more rear here initiation. Yeah, and you can see Forrest that. Wang like pulling a little bit of angle out to catch back up with Chris Forsberg. It was, it was a smart move. I mean, it didn't give him full proximity all the way through, but once they get into two, you can see Forrest kind of just get back on the throttle and start to close up. Chris didn't fill all of outside zone two, so there is a little bit of room there. Forrest did spend a lot of time in the smoke. It is not easy to drive through here. And you can see Forrest surge ahead a little bit to get out of the smoke while Chris dips his tires back. So different styles, different you know driving techniques that we're seeing here, but they, they pair up really cool and make for a really yep. interesting battle. Yeah, and, and, and you called it, you know, there's a little lack of angle, but make up that for proximity right here. Again, you see Chris really going for it, dips that back right, throws up some gravel right in front of the fans. And Forsberg, you know, filled it, filled that second outside zone. Departure a little bit early, or kind of midsection, then got deeper. But that allowed again Forrest Wang with close proximity. But he uh, again was was shallower there. Look at that clean build. Woo. Taking a look at the show cars that are here in the building from Subarus and Hondas. That's where I cut my teeth. I'm I'm a Honda like really? OG. Yeah. I did not know that. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I, had a, I had an EK back in the day with the B18. Okay. All that. Yeah. You stick with the B series and swap the K. No. Or? Okay. That, dude, this is before K's were out. Oh, fair enough. So okay. let's just, yeah, let's no, just chill right. on that, okay? <laughs> so, yeah, I had a good conversation with Rywire. Um, they, they built some really cool Hondas and stuff like that. So had him on my podcast with Electrify Expo. So that was cool, wrapping out with him. All right, here we go. Let's alternate the order. Forrest Wang will lead Chris Forsberg giving chase and celebrating 20 years of Formula Drift. My back hurts just saying that. <laughs> a lot of a lot of flying. That's what that attributes yeah, to, man. Yeah. So, but uh, I love it. I, w I would not change it for the world. I told told President of Formula Drift Ryan Sater said, if I won the lotto, I'm still announcing Formula Drift. I'm just retiring everything else. <laughs> no, <laughs> no offense to other projects and people I work with, but Forrest Wayne goes across the nose with a Manji entry, but Forsberg not in phase. So again, that that's something that the spotter needs to tell him and inform him. Now Forrest Wayne in that second outside zone, Forrest. Way off course, digging deep, but that again, that does allow Chris with that proximity in that last outside zone. Now there goes Forrest in that last outside zone. Forsberg right there on the door of that yellow speed racing S chassis. Again, Forrest always has just a really cool, I mean, signature green, big chrome, big wing, you know, just a definitely steezy, you know, just always has a, a really dynamic looking, kind of more J-style car. Yeah, I'm really here to put on a show. You can see that with this entry. I've been watching him do this, try different things, and it did work out here. Where things get a little bit crazy, though, is this transition here seemed a little bit late, starting to push him off, and that's where we see the tires dip. And we've seen, if you get two tires into the gravel, anything can happen. You can run the whole zone and be fine. You can hit one little mound and wreck your entire day. He's able to hang on to it. Chris Forsberg playing the veteran, able to anticipate what was about to happen, pulls away, stays on line, 
and keep the composure. It can be really difficult mm -hmm. when you see somebody dip off like that. Your instinct is almost to follow them, but Chris, able to understand what's about to happen, shores himself up to get back on the correct line, and you can see Chris Forsberg on the correct line. Forrest comes back onto the track, and Chris is right there to chase him the rest of the way through. Yeah, that was, that was a good, again, we, we talked about Chris going off Forrest, Forrest right there, but with that two off, you're, that's that's a trust fall. Like I said, yeah. you know, we're we're building we're building a team here. Now catch me, Jacob. But <laughs> that that's you know that's Forrest going two wheels off. The entrustment there or the risk, the yeah. risk of Forsberg going and sticking it right there because he could have spun out, could have crashed into him. But if he would have backed off, how would have that have looked? And that's that risking it for the biscuit. Therefore, risking it for the 16, going 32 to 16. Speaking of Z's, classic Z's from a Dotson to an all new Z, Forsberg. We'll see if the needle goes his way. There's one vote for Forsberg and two. Chris Forsberg gets the win. <laughs> is that kind of funny for you to sit next to me saying that? I was almost asking if I could say it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, stay in your lane, Jacob. I'm not trying to go on your podcast and steal right, your lines. All right, I got you. <laughs> Chris Forsberg gets the win. A good effort there by Forrest Wang, but um, you know, judges are placed in front of us. I have to assume uh, Forrest going off, a little bit of proximity lacking there, Forsberg. A little bit more proximity, more dialed on that lead run by Forsberg as opposed to Forrest. Did I, am a thumbs up on that, Edgar? Anything else you want to add to that? Brian, Ryan, Robbie, anything else you want to Sean, you like that? Am I, am, I, am I on the mark there? Okay, good talk. Yep, they, they agree. <laughs> That's uh, Chris Forsberg, Jimmy Jam right there. Got the headset on, talking to Chris. I believe Alex Jager is his spotter, so Alex doing pro spec and spotting for Chris Forsberg. But Chris Forsberg gets the win. I saw Lorette down there in the hot pits. Moving on to our next battle. Some more uh, Brazilian barbecue. Joao Berrion, but he's going to bake some tires, not some meats. Well, I guess theoretically we can call rubber meat yeah, tires. Yeah, meat yeah. tires, yeah. Yeah, I got some meat tires. The GT radial underneath both of these vehicles as we are seeing Joao Berrion. Matt Field needs a result, you know. Talking about Seattle and St. Louis hasn't made it out of the round of 16. Ugh, from Long Beach to here, you know, again, Matt has more fun than anybody I saw, you know, talking to, I don't know if you saw, but the Gittin team, so RTR team, Forsberg team, the Field team, everybody went karting yesterday yeah. when they had their yeah. time off. So that, that just goes to show you a little bit of fun, but also still competitive on their day off. We need a race of champions. Let's get them all in karts okay. and see what happens. I'm down. Let's yeah. do it. So Joao very on from Brazil, and then we got Matt Field, who uh, who's actually chasing him down. Joao qualified eighth. Matt Field 25th. So look at that. Joao very on coming in, and again Matt. Oh no, Matt Field shuts her down on initiation. What just happened? That is insane. So Joao very on the corner. Oh, Joao oh. shuts it down. Oh, it was a restart. restart. Okay. okay, thank you. Jeez Louise, I was like, what the heck happened here? As far as... Okay, so that is a restart, just to clarify here. Didn't know what happened here. We, you know, we're, we're aghast just because we want to see a good battle. Not that we're like Matt Field fans compared to Joao or this or that, but th we talk about how severe it is to get an advancement. And here's somebody who's gunning for a championship who won in Long Beach. And just talking about that prior, knocking out a 16th for Matt Field, that, that would have been a big detriment, a big blow to his points run. So that's kind of why we were aghast, not like, oh my gosh, yeah, it's I'm, just, a, I'm a huge Matt Field fan, what happened? It's well, more of like, what, what did happen? It was just a massive championship implication yeah. is what it was. And, and um, there is lights from, uh, from Restart to let them know, but maybe Zhao missed it and Matt didn't. And you can see, oh, it did, look. Something yeah, did come something off the car. Yeah, something flew off of uh, Joao's vehicle. I don't yeah, know it could what have that been a was. camera. I mean, those GoPros are built to last, so I'm sure it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> right. All right, now you're just trying to get one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, uh, all right. Well, they're re-racking real quick. Let's throw it down to Chris Forsberg and Lorette Nickel. Chris. Hi, Chris. Nice to see you. You too. Well, so Chris just jumped out of the car. This is the first time that I'm seeing him today. Yeah. Glad to see you. Congratulations on the win. Uh, you qualified 16th, which were kind of, it's unusual to see you mid-pack. Was there issues that you were dealing with? Um, yeah, we actually had a uh, uh, air temp sensor issue that we didn't realize uh, going into qualifying. And so what it was doing was we are getting a false read, and it was actually pulling power out of the car throughout the run. So by the time we got to the end of the run, we are actually about 150 horsepower down. So that's why we kind of like missed the outer zone and it couldn't get it up on the edge of the track. So 
I mean, we're happy that we're, you know, in the show, of course, but we discovered it, fixed it for today, and turned the wick up, and we're ready. Okay, ready. So, ready for battle against James Dean, yep. who you're going to see in top 16. What are your expectations there? Uh, I mean, Dean's a killer. We've seen him once this year in Atlanta. We got him then, hoping to get him again. Um, he's, he's fast, you know, he's consistent. He obviously has a good handle on that car now. He qualified first, so... Um, you know, I'm just expecting a nice, clean, fun battle. He's, uh, you know, just a ripper, so we're going to bring it. Love that. Chris, thanks so much for your time. Guys? Thank you so much, Lorette. And while you were interviewing Chris Forsberg, just to clarify, Joao continued on through the course, but and Matt turned around. Again, we were shocked, but the case was it's a restart. But in the meanwhile, Joao Berrion is calling a competition timeout, hence why you see him strapped up. So uh, he is getting towed back. He calls his NGK competition timeout. So Joao, the Brazilian driver. Speaking of NGK, NGK does make ignition coils. Why? Because... NGK prefers a running partner that can keep pace. NGK knows ignition, and since NGK spark plugs don't run alone, we put some of our energy and expertise into making a better coil. NGK ignition coils are engineered to OE durability and performance, and because we race to win, we continue to improve the design, testing and validation of our ignition coils to make installation easier and performance better. NGK spark plugs and coils better together. All right, so as far as the NGK competition timeout being utilized, every driver and team has one to utilize, and that could be utilized as early as qualifying or as late as the finals, but you only get one, and that is a five-minute allotment. If there's contact being made, the judges will decipher who's at fault. If a driver's not at fault, they'll traditionally get a 10-minute allotment to fix their vehicle, but if you are at fault, you have to use it, the NGK competition timeout. Formula Drift merchandise, be sure to go to shopfd.com if you're not in the building, but if you're here in the building, what's going on here? Peekaboo. All right, well, uh, we got skateboard decks, T-shirts, we got hats. We got things, we got stuff, we got Type S gear. We also have Lean Customs pins. If you have not seen them, limited edition Lean Customs pins at every round and Utah exclusive t shirt So pick up your merch. We got tie dye hats. Those guys are hopped up on Rockstar, brother. It's a good time over I there. I want to bottle some of that energy. No. All right, there it is. Available now at the Formula Drift Merchandise booth. Talking about 20 years of Formula Drift. So uh, again, I uh, can't say it enough. Thank you to our current president and co-founder, Ryan Sage, and our co-founder, Jim Lau, that's working with the PRI, Performance Racing Industry and SEMA organization, for their structuring of what some people thought was a fad in 2004, began at Road Atlanta. We went on to Houston, Sonoma, and Irwindale. That's where the first four rounds were, and again, 20 years ago, and here we are celebrating 20 years of what is far from a fad. Like I said, Jacob, um, I flew in Thursday morning, midday, excuse me, and I was with Jim Farley, CEO, and he helped launch Scion back in the day, and, and it, which is crazy. And then now look at Ford, their involvement, you know, it, going to SEMA show back in the day, it's like, here's these here's these punk kids, you know, Von Gitt Jr., Chris Forsberg, Ken Gushi. Now they're, Toyo, you know, Ryan Turk, they're Toyota, they're Ford, they're Nissan, and, and Ford isn't like, you know, as a side gig, it's on the tip of their tongue. It's in line with sports car racing, drag racing, you know, all, all these, all these, you know, all these off-road racing, right? It, it's it's on the tip of their tongue. It's not an afterthought. Yeah, they, they realize how important the sport is, how big it's getting, how fast it's growing, and how you, you introduce somebody to drifting, and they love it. Mm -hmm. It's it's incredible. I mean, what, five years ago, you talked about drifting, and people kind of had an idea and probably said some driver that didn't make sense. Right. And now you say, oh, yeah, no, I've heard of that Vaughn Kitten. And right. it's, it's amazing how much of a household name these drivers have become. Yep, absolutely. And, uh, and again, this, uh, this platform that is Formula Drift and, you know, just the uh, the growth of the sport and just, I mean, even concurrently, you know, you got Drift Masters going on in Poland, you got, you know, certain events going on here and there and, and everywhere, you know, um, Mad Mike doing a Drift Shifters type event, a totally different kind of feel or a Jim Connor grid type event. It all contributes, but Formula Drift, really proud to say, is the, the premier international drifting sanctioning body with the opportunity and the access and the platform given to these drivers internationally. I mean, here we are looking at a Brazilian driver, you know, Irish driver, we have, you know, Latvian driver, American driver, Drivers, Japanese, so this uh, this this sport from 2004 to 2023, and do the math. Everybody's like, that's 19 years. I'm like, okay, 
do the math. Yeah, I, won't, yeah, I, won't, yeah. I won't bore you with the one, details. Two, three, Dean Carnage Carney, <laughs> an Irish driver versus a Minnesota driver, Alec Robbins. So Dean Carnage Carney, who this track really suited well because, again, testimonial to that, he uh, qualified ninth. Dean Carney going against Alec Robbins, and Dean Carney will lead HyperNFT.io. Dodge Viper, Alec Robbins, that straight line approach. And look at that drop right to the side of the Viper. Is there? No. All right, going to have to take a look at the angle. I had a different perspective and angle there in that second outside zone. Like I said, Dean Carney, this track really suits his style. Right on that course edge is Dean Carnage Carney. Going to that last outside zone and filling all of it. Alec Robbins looking at him, tucking into that pocket. Really well done by Alec Robbins. What say you, Jacob? I mean, again, this track <laughs> suits particular driver's style. You know, it, it just seems that Dean, Chelsea Denofa, I mean, this is awesome. Yeah, Alec Robbins, smart move in the way he initiates. He, he basically came in just behind Dean, waiting for him to start his, his movement, and then dove in right behind him. And the couple of times where Alec Robbins was a little bit behind, he was able to shore the car up, get caught up, and then get back into the pocket. And that's what we're seeing basically through the whole run. You can see that surge there as they transition to three. And then Alec Robbins just lived in the smoke for the entire outside zone three. I have no idea how he knew where he was going. That's pure instinct at that point in time. And uh, Dean Carney, though, out front, laying down a great run. He has been shredding here all weekend. I've loved watching his practice. Yeah, and you know, kudos to Robbins. Again, just that comfortability to get right to the side of him. And it's such so, a bold move. Uh, want, yeah, yeah, real quick. Trying to listen here. Oh, Having no. trouble firing that thing up. Something's not firing. Yeah. So Joao Barry on inside the cockpit. Looks like nothing. <laughs> and uh, looks like. Uh, yeah, is that is that homeboy from uh, FDM? Josiah, yeah, 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 Josiah. Yeah, I think it is. Is that Ethan? The oh, there's a, there's a rumor mill old, starting old, there on top of the drift cave. What's going hey, on there? Yeah. Little meat sweats. Yeah. <laughs> so there's there's Joao's team. I'm not seeing the clock. Oh, there it is, right behind him. Just under three minutes. Just under three minutes for Joao. The car is not firing up. This could be an easy win for Field. Not the way you want to win. Keep in mind when Field had that that buy run. Remember, he got a buy run in 32 into the 16. That's when he kind of, you know, mm. didn't didn't perform and didn't get out. So it's, it's not it's off. not always an advantage to have that by run. You kind of want to get that, you know, cut your teeth, get more familiar with the track, especially head to head, not just qualifying. So uh, we'll see we'll see what happens. It's momentum. You win in the top 32. You've Great got work. momentum. You've got you know excitement. You're like, okay, we got one under our belt. We're in the next part of the show. Yep. You know, and when, and when you get that by run, you don't get that. Here we go, Alec Robbins out front, Dean Carnage Carney. Here's a look at the telemetry. Uh, so Alec Robbins, you can see the speeds here in the chase position. Dean Carnage Carney, 83, 85, 80, 90 miles per hour, almost triple digits. Alec Robbins initiates, gets to that inside clip. Now that first outside zone hit it, quit it. In the second outside zone, goes Robbins, non-stop tuning vehicle. Looks like he gets into it right on that course edge. I mean, these guys are tit for tat. 60, almost 70 miles per hour at angle. In that final outside zone, Alec Robbins dips that tire, shredding that back bumper. Gravel being thrown up quite a bit. Yeah, Dean was a little bit further back than what I was expecting. Mm. You're talking about proximity. Yeah, right? yeah. And, and what's interesting when we, we get back to the replay here is watch what Alec Robbins does on his initiation and where Dean Carney is. He is way back there. And Dean's car is fast. It is crazy fast. And it can, it can pick up the gap. And it really doesn't here. Alec does a great job through inner clip one, through outer zone one, as he gets to outer zone two. Big left foot brake. You see him let off, and the car snaps to angle. And then Dean's able to pick up the pace and get that proximity again. But then through transition, Dean's way back, and he doesn't get a chance to pick up the speed until Alec has dropped the tire and lost momentum. So it's going to be interesting. This is going to be one of those where the judges have to look at who made mistakes where, what zones are the most important, who made the bigger mistakes. But yeah, Dean was way further back than what I was expecting for a car that fast and for a guy that was looking that good in practice all day. That's, that just comes down to anticipation. You know, Alec, Alec kind of went back and forth. He had really good proximity. I liked when he dropped in. That looks really great. And that just comes down to that really good solid lead run. And, and, and just with the way the fluidity of this track goes, oh, Joao's out of the car. Oh, no. That's going to be a wrap. Got it. He's still, still congratulating his team. He knows it's a team effort. It's a group effort. 
So Joao does not make his five. That's going to be a by run for Matt Field. So here goes Field awaiting, will it be Carney or Robbins? Joao Berrion, the Barbarius Monster Energy Corvette. Taking a look at some uh, good looking cars here in the pits. Throttle, if you have not signed up. T-H-R-O-D-L, creating an account. Let's take a look at our BC Racing Go for Gold side-by-side -side instant replay. Yeah, so this is who's, the initiation. Who's, who's leading on the left? Looks like Dean. Dean's leading on the left. Alex leading on the right screen. And you can really see the difference in that initiation there. And then I know the judges right now are definitely looking at line. That is the big thing that they want to see. So checking the lead on both cars as we try to split our vision and bounce back and forth. And then the proximity in the chase is, is kind of the next defining factor. So as long as the lead driver was on line for the majority of it, which most of them, they really were, Although Alec does drop at least one wheel for a good yeah, chunk that of that almost, side zone three. Almost was two. I, I, again, that lead car really dictates what that chase car can do. Mm -hmm. I, will, I will, to your point, say I think Dean gave Alec a little bit too much room and kind of didn't, didn't help himself out there. But Alec, you could see he got into the shrapnel there and just you know shredded that back bumper off. But uh, let's see what we got. Do we have a verdict? Slide him left for Dean Carney, right for Alec Robbins. And there's a vote for Dean Carnage Carney. Two votes for Dean Carnage Carney. Love for one of the judges. Oh, oh, one and, time. And Robin Ishida said one more time. Uh, Lontane, can you put on your headset, please, for me? And uh, get, again, you and Brian Eggert said Dean Carney. And again, really splitting hairs. Hey, uh, Ryan Lontane, can you uh, elaborate, please? Hi, Jared. I'm um, looking at what. G, uh, Dean Carney did in the lead position was very, very strong. He put his car everywhere it needed to be. He may have missed inside clip one a bit, but overall really positioned his car well throughout the run. In the chase position, uh, Alec Robbins was making some mistakes in the chase. He, he, uh, he had to make some compromises on zone two. He was close, but he made compromises to get close. We turned the tables and uh, we got Alec Robbins in the lead. Alec missed a lot of stuff in his lead run. He was uh, making compromises on outside zone number one, and he also dropped a tire through the entirety of outside zone two. Dean Carney was not as close, but he had a, a less uh, a less good um, <laughs> lead run to follow. So uh, that's why I went with Dean Carney. Yeah, and that's, that was kind of my point. Uh, thank you, Ryan, for kind of reaffirming what I saw. And, and that gap, yes, it was initially far, but it's going to grow or maintain, especially if you compromise that angle. So, and, and that's, that's why I'm, Dean was further away than Robbins was. Dean Carney is throwing more angle at it. That allows that. So Matt Field has a – thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Robbie. All right, Matt Field has a buy run. While we are watching this buy run, he will advance on the top 16. Portal exhaust, lean customs, heat wave, the Ford Star wheels wrapped in those GT radials. And uh, throw down to the rat, who's with Joao Berrion. Heard that a belt got thrown and a sealant broke. What happened? Yeah, probably the seal uh, came off and dropped some oil in the belt. We still don't know. Uh, unfortunately, because we are doing like better and better, we already did the three top ten in qualified this year. Uh, still having some bad luck for competitions, but we are getting there. Okay. Joao, thank you very much. Better luck in Irwindale, guys. Back to you. Yeah, that's tough. You never, I mean, these, these cars are running at the ragged edge all the time, and the more you drive, the more miles we put on them, the, the, the more they're going to break, unfortunately. But uh, hopefully Zhao is able to get that sorted, and we'll see him in Irwindale as we uh, go to our GoPro live here in the pits, taking a look at some of the interactions over at the throttle booth. Love this camera angle. Love that we're getting to do this and kind of see behind the scenes. And for everybody watching at home, if you've never been to an FD event, highly, highly recommend it. Our next battle coming up here, Travis Reeder, Jonathan Hurst, both in BMWs, similar horsepower numbers we've got a big v8 with some nitrous and then we got jonathan hurst with that giant single turbo this battle is going to be loud and it is going to be aggressive both of these drivers love banging doors both of them put everything in uh, i actually got an opportunity to do a ride along with travis reader uh this weekend and uh did a bit of an interview so hopefully we'll get to see that in the next week or two as we edit all that audio and travis reader jonathan hurst up at the line we're gonna see how this battle goes down Right. Again, Reader, a real force to be reckoned with. He qualified really well. At one point, he did have that number one spot, and then that Nicholas BMW just got knocked down more and more. And then uh, Jonathan Hurst. All right, so uh, let's see. Jonathan Hurst, he lost a wheel yesterday. Hopefully, he came underneath him. Uh, or not yesterday, but two days ago. So, Reader, 
And Jonathan Hurst coming to that first inside clip. They kind of do evade that. Travis Reeder, like I said, oh, and Jonathan Hurst straightens out a big collection from him. Reeder keeps it out there. And now Jonathan Hurst, that Mr. Cool, BMW Cash Racing. Oh, Reeder gets really heavy into the gravel pit. Wow. So uh, again, a little back and forth there. Kind of evaded that inside clip, going to that second outside zone. There's some mistakes on both ends. Yeah, you can see both of them initiating almost at the same time. Jonathan starts to reel Travis back in as Travis misses most of the first inside clip. And then we see this really snappy transition there from Jonathan Hurst, but it doesn't get him all the angle he was looking for and puts him further back. Well, Travis gets into outside zone two, does a great job. Jonathan transitions a bit early again before going to three. Gets a different line going up, and then Travis starts going off track. Jonathan dives in there. Might have been a little bit of contact, but uh, either way, I have, a, I have a feeling both these BMWs are going to be leaving this battle with some scars on them, that's for sure. Yeah, they're going to got to tighten it up here. You know, again, look at, you see Reader kind of overshoot the inside clip, but Jonathan makes a mistake here, shoots heavily on the inside. Reader fills all that outside zone, and watch her say, all right, I got to get back in there. Throws it back in, real quick, hand, yank of the handbrake. Again, Hurst, very shallow, but Reader gets, uh, it looked like just that back right. Yeah. I thought it was deeper than it was, but uh, again, just got it. I'll get chastised out of the gate. That's why it's, it's really hard to, you know, see this from that one angle and then when you see that other angle looks like two but it ends up being one because i mean look at watch this in this last outside zone i mean that looks like that back left goes off but when you flip around to the to the drone it was just that back right that dig that yeah. dug into it yeah what's interesting too is Hurst's transitions are really really snappy but it's making him oh. shallow he's not pulling all the way through i think he I think he hit that carbon kevlar put in reverse terry yep back her up you gotta put in reverse terry there we go terry that's a pop culture reference, by I, the way. And I do know that one, yeah, I know. Just for people, his, I know his name's not Terry. Oh, I look know. at this. What, did he give it the chef's kiss? I think so. Give it a little Italian? The pride of Paducah? Is, is Hearst Italian? I do not think so. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so, but uh, he's keeping it cool, Mr. Cool. He's having a lot of fun this year. Super stoked uh, picked up that title sponsor, Mr. Cool. He's on Vitor Tires, yeah. a new entry into the Formula Drift Championship. Designed his own wheel. Likes yeah. it so much, he, like throws, he throws them to the fans. <laughs> I don't think his sponsor knows too that. Soon. <laughs> too soon. <laughs> well, he did. He I did know. talk about that. He did talk about that on social media. He says the studs sheared off. Yeah. Um, he had new ones. They got longer ones. He, he gave shout outs to other uh, other teams helping him out, including Reader. But uh, this is how it's shaping up so far. Yeah. Top 16. So James Dean versus Chris Forsberg. Look at that. That's gonna Six be good. championships between the two. Matt Field, Dean Carney. Obviously, no championship, but that should be a fun one. Field and Carney, come on. Yeah. Oh, no. Very fast. Am I see, what am I seeing there? I saw hand movement. Yeah. I saw Dean give a little, was that a don't look at her? Or what's going on there? I know Dean's brother's up here. We saw Bridges. What, what does that mean? We, we good? I saw, I, good. I saw this. Okay. All right. Just making sure. <laughs> yeah. All right. Here we go. Jonathan Hurst will now lead Mr. Cool BMW, the Nicholas BMW of Travis Reeder. Old red, new red. Give me some more of it. Travis Reeder chasing him down. Again, Hurst had to, uh, was forced to go to the not so great eight, that bottom eight, qualifying 29th. But I know he's going to really be aggressive here in this lead position, leaving nothing to the imagination as far as where is he going to place his car. And I think that Reeder could very well be, uh, be, be right there on the door again. Just this is a, there's going to be an aggressive run here from both these drivers. Here we go. Jonathan Hurst initiates Reader almost simultaneously into that inside clip. There they go wrapping around a lot of good proximity there. Travis Reader throws a little too much angle at it in that first outside zone. Now go to the second outside zone. Jonathan Hurst is all up in it. Travis Reader, really good line by him. Did not compromise going into the inside. And oh, and here we go. Looks like, again, both of them get to the gravel. Like I said, I don't. Reader knows how Jonathan Hurst drives, so I think he knows that he needs to turn it up to 11 because Hurst doesn't leave anything to the imagination as far as the aggressiveness of his driving. Yeah, Hurst is super fast. He really enjoys gripping that car, especially with those detour tires. But uh, it, was, it was a great job by Reader in the chase there. He did overshoot a little bit into one, kind of didn't anticipate how that transition was going to go from the initiation out. But then Travis was very cool, calm, and composed all the way through the rest of this run, and Jonathan Hurst is just 
pedal to the floor the entire way down, drops a bit of dirt there, does get gapped a little bit, Travis, but not a ton. Travis, was, like I said, just very composed throughout the whole thing. He knew he had a bit of an advantage in that burst that had kind of made some early transitions, and that Travis just had to lay down a solid chase run. Jonathan doing everything he can out front, does a great job there through two, nice long transition, gets him real wide into three, which kind of pushes Travis back. Jonathan dips one of those light speed racing wheels into the dirt, and they come across the line. A couple of mistakes here, a couple of mistakes there from both of them. A little bit of dirt, a little bit of dust, a little bit of everything. This is where I don't uh, envy the judges. This is, you're, you're splitting the hairs. You know, both had those mistakes. So you said, who who, who had less mistakes? I, I hate to say that, but that's uh, kind of some reality here. So our judges really going to analyze here. You can see this is this is the judges booth so you can see the big screen there right in the middle of your screen there's there's split screen and so you have you have six different perspectives and angles that we're scrubbing back and forth so thank you for joining us up here jared dienda obviously jacob getting well the getting is good so uh thank you to gopro again for coming on board with us and uh, gopro the brand new hero 12 be sure to visit the booth either uh here or at irwindale again special deals going down in the all new hero 12 200 bundles got some good savings so and also giving one away here today at three o'clock so uh gopro hero 12 ryan sage say hi to the the camera right there ryan sage <laughs> president co-founder of formula drift looks like the judges are getting back to their respective seats and find out if we do have an outcome slide them left slide them right and it's going to be either Travis Reeder or Jonathan Hurst, who is going against Dean, no, excuse me, is going against either Osbo or Kyle Mohan in the 16. That's our spotter stand right there, Sorry. cheering on or in the heads of their drivers. Reeder and Hurst, slide them left. We got it one more time. We got a Reeder and Travis Reeder. So again, Travis Reeder gets the win. Hey, Robbie, throw on your headset, bud. We're gonna get Robin Sheeta in here again, joining us after a couple years hiatus. I don't know if you know the world is shut down, but uh, Robin Sheeta, you went with Travis Reeder. Why is that? Yes, we did. Uh, we you and Ryan went and uh, checked the replay, and it looked like um, the mistake that both of the drivers made uh, when Reeder was in the chase position at the outside zone three. It looked really ugly, but it was pretty much because the uh, lead car led him into it. And also, Reader in the chase position, he looked like he was uh, coming short on line at the outside zone two when he was in the chase position. Uh, but Hurst did a little bit worse, I guess, at the outside zone two area in the chase position as well. So it's just, you know, really small things, but uh, we had to compare everything yeah. and uh, we went uh, with Reader. Yeah, and that's, and that's what I, I, I hate to say, like who made the, the least amount of mistakes, but that was the case of that one. You know, like you said, not the prettiest there towards the end, but again, who leads who where? Travis Reeder gets the win. Moving on to our next battle. Who is Reeder going to go against? Our three-time defending back-to-back -back champion against 21-22 and previous to that. So, again, could he be our first ever four-time champion? He's going against Kyle Menace Mohan. There's Steph Papadakis watching on. He's in the head of Frederick Osbo. Steph Papadakis, you know, obviously operating a, a few different vehicles out of his Toyota camp, that being uh, Ryan Turk. They kind of operate by themselves, but, again, a lot of engineering there. And, uh, yeah. It's be an yeah, you battle. look like you were ignoring the camera, but a little, it's it's okay. We we know you're you're focused. You got to be uh, in the head of your driver, or you know, again, different different methodology. You know, some drivers want you kind of talk to them or just say, "Hey, good job," a little a little slap on the rear end, say, "Get on out there, boy." So here we go. Frederick Osboy, that red that Rockstar Energy Toyota GR Super Nitto tires, and Kyle Lewis Mohan, the Mazda RX8. Kyle Mohan, a veteran of Formula Drift. Frederick Osbo, good angle there in the second outside zone. Kyle Mohan. Look at that proximity there, the screaming Wankles coming down the pipe. And that last outside zone, Mohan, oh, Mohan falls off just a little bit there. And that's, that again, Mohan is, is a really good chase job up until that final outside zone. Jacob, I see you kind of gesturing like, look at this. It's, it, you know, Mohan's giving it the beans, man. He was giving it to the Norwegian hammer. I mean, let's go back to Irwindale last year. They had a crazy battle together. So that's that's where my mind went here. But yeah, Kyle Mohan, a little bit shallow on the initiation. Frederick Osbo doing what Frederick Osbo does, which is lay down a perfect lead run, which opens up Kyle Mohan to get super aggressive in the chase. Cuts some line, coming into two, gets into that pocket, starts to fall back a little bit. I mean, he's trying to get as much power, as much yeah. torque out of those rotaries as possible, and overshoots just a little bit into three, and that's all it takes here. You overshoot a little bit, that gravel is so unforgiving. But look at this initiation. 
Kyle doing a great job. And then just starts to dive in, starts to reel Frederick Osmo back in, using all the RPM in that car. It, it's so loud, it's so yeah. visceral, I love it. And Frederick Osmo though, just, he's, he's so good. He's yeah, so good. it's so robotic. I, I will tell you, as robotic as we call Osmo, he has had some mistakes. There have been some kind of chinks in the armor, right? Yeah. And, and, and again, taking a look at, uh, at Mohan's chase run he did compromise getting out to outside zone one and two yeah he compromised getting out there but he did have that proximity that's where you know the judges have really focused on line and in, in, in that that yin and yang of it all you know that proximity and that line you, obviously you want both but when it comes to that you know is does Mohan have the competitive vehicle against this three-time champion? You know, would love to see Mohan get on the box. You know, the, the rotary, obviously, just such an iconic engine, and him being, you know, the, the lone rotary in competition. I saw a great internet video yesterday. So uh, you can see Osbo, the 151, on the shirt, cheering him on. But uh, And uh, our judges taking a look, getting poised for the second half of this battle. Kyle Mohan, Renewable Lubricants, Mazda Trix, Mazda RX-8 will lead. Again, saw a great video uh, on the internet where it was his, it was Mohan's car on the dyno. Oh yeah, and it, was, it just looked violent. People are frightened. Of it. So we, we know that it's got a lot of horsepower. Just can he manage it? Can he massage it in the right places? Taking a look at the, uh, you can see the telemetry, 84, 85, 90, 99 miles per hour for Mohan on initiation. Frederick Osmo, he's gonna chase him down, going into and you can see Mohan from that angle. With proximity, want to see where they're at, the placement of the car. You see Mohan just, just barely dipping in to that outside zone. Great lead run there by Mohan, but Osbo cannot be shaken. Showing you why he is three-time champion. Frederick Osbo has spent so much time chasing drivers of all styles, of all skills, of all abilities, of power in different chassis. He is, he is, I mean, this is why he's a multiple time champion. Mm -hmm. So Kyle Mohan has a good initiation here. Not a ton of angle, but he's, it almost looks like, he, like he's trying to run away, but Osbo knows what to do. He understands what's going on. You know, Steph Papadakis gave him all the right information that says, okay, run as close as you feel comfortable, but don't go crazy. Just don't make any mistakes. And Kyle Mohan doing a pretty good job out front. Could have been deeper in a couple zones. Definitely could have had some more angle, but Frederick Osbo, playing the perfect game. Not super aggressive, but staying in the fight the entire time. So you see there that Kyle Mohan left foot break all the way through that first inside clip, missing it a little bit. Sets himself up almost too early for outside zone two. He's able to get the car back in. You can see those brake lights flashing as he taps that left foot brake to get the car to settle itself back in the zone. So coming to three onto the rumble strips and just running the edge of the line. Beautiful drone clip. Oh, I love the drone angles. I, you, you took the words out of my mouth. A couple of things there. We're spoiled with these camera angles now. I, you know, obviously we want in-car. In-car is something that we'd love to see, but I, I, shouts out to uh, Kemp and the boys and the whole team, uh, all the perspectives. But then Freddie, what a way to adapt uh, to Kyle Mohan. You saw him just on his toes. Great effort by Kyle Mohan. A little bit shallow here and there, but uh, Kyle Mohan knocked out, you know, dealt a very difficult hand. Osbo currently second in points, three-time champion. Mohan definitely just right there on the cusp of just cracking it and getting on the box. But uh, unfortunately, going against Frederick Osbo, and we know how capable he is, and Osbo will get the win. He's going to go against Travis Reeder in our Royal Purple Top 16. Got some Ryan on Ryan action coming up here, Jared. Yeah? Yep. Oh, Ryan Literal, Ryan Turk? Yep. Okay. Again, we are in our Rockstar Energy Drink Top 32 Can and Knockout Qualifying. Again, uh, again, be sure to go by the RTR booth and uh, Art KNN, the official air filter of Formula Drift. I know KNN sponsoring. Uh, they're down at the uh, Baja 400. So that's uh, I know a lot of them are down there. So Ryan Literal, Ryan Turk, Literal. Best qualification this year, qualifying fifth in that Power Stop collab, the RB Army, that S15. He's going against the Toyota, the Rain-X. Toyota GR Corolla Nitto Tires, the Rockstar Energy Drink Pilot. That is Ryan Turk. Here we go, so Ryan Literal will lead the Power Stop Brakes S15. Ryan Turk chasing him down.
Ryan Little initiating into, again, the 3 2 1 cone, inside clip, both of them on it. Going to that outside zone one. Good proximity from Ryan Turk in the chase. You see Ryan Turk take a little bit of angle out of it, but maintaining kind of the same distance. Literal going all the way to that course edge. Maybe a little bit of gravel being thrown up. And going to this final outside zone. Feeling all of it. I'll tell you what, Ryan Literal, great lead run. Turk, you saw take a little bit of angle out of it, but then reassume that position. Want to scrutinize this run again, taking a look at the different angles overall. So let's see. So Ryan Literal taking a midline approach to his initiation. Nothing too crazy. Him and I actually spoke a little bit about it yesterday. But great job through inner clip one. Good job through outside zone one. Ryan Turk following behind. Not a ton of proximity, but definitely close. And I love this little addition of angle here. Right at the end of two, which kind of throws Turk off, it yeah, looks I think like. So. And then holds it all the way through three. Like, that's a, that's a fun little move there to add on. It shoots him across the rest of the track, sets him up, and then he can kind of transition a bit later. We see some guys taking a more straight line approach to their transitions. Ryan Literal here and a couple other drivers that are, we'll see up in battle soon are doing the same thing. So watch here at the very end of two. Ryan Literal adds a bit more angle. It scoots him across and he's able to get on the power and transition a bit later. And it's, it's not a line that we're seeing a ton of guys take, but you do know that Ryan Turk spotters would have told him to anticipate that. So, and, and you know, Ryan Literal, like you said, pour some more angle out. He did that drop that little back left tire and that could have thrown off Ryan Turk because that's going to desell the car, but also, you know, I, I'm going to be honest, love Literal. We've, we've, we've spent a lot of time together and, and, and love what he's doing here. But I will tell you that, you know, uh, as far as Literal this season has had some hiccups, right? <laughs> so I'm going to be a little, you know, cautious because something might go south. And, and Turk, you know, he's, he's had some up and downs as well. So overall, but uh, I think now with Ryan Turk and that clean air, I think uh, I, I, I'm, I'm expecting some... Good fluid lines. Ryan Literal, he knows who he's going against. Ryan Turk, you know, he's a he's top 10 driver right now. Literal, good effort. This track suits his style. So it's going to be open it up, you know, just open that floodgate. I think both these Ryans are going to make it rain. Here we go. Speaking of rain, Rain X, the Toyota GR Corolla. Nitto tires, throws it into that first 3 2 1 inside clip. Boom. There goes that little hot hatchback into the second outside zone. Builds all of it. Ryan Turk. See a little bit of a lift there. Ryan Literal makes a correction there to gain that proximity. Turk, good fluid line. That second outside zone. Ryan Literal diving in. And Turk. So you see Literal again gaining that proximity. So, you know, analyzing both. Want to take a look at different angles here. You know, and I think the, the truth serum camera, just that overhead view, shows you the car placement where they're at, you know, the universal hand signal for drifting with the hands, right? Yeah, Ryan Turk takes a wide approach and kind of a, a slingshot over to initiation. We see a little bit of a left foot break there, and then he gets on the power and starts walking away from Ryan Literal. This car is so fast, but he's able to handle it. He's able to keep it mostly in the zone through two. Ryan Literal holding line. He's kind of realized, okay, if I can't keep up, I'm gonna make sure that I'm maintaining line behind him. This comes a little bit of the transition as Ryan Turk just lays down the middle tire smoke and then Ryan Literal right at the end, get that last impression of proximity right at the line, but big, big initiation there from Turk. Hits inside clip one really well, in outside zone one, crushes that, gets a transition in, back on power he needs to. Could have been a little deeper in two, but I mean, you know, we're just we're just we're picking little Split things here and there. And then no. Ryan Literal kind of just trying to figure out the best way to approach this. He knows Turk is fast. It looks like for the majority of the run, he just decided to stay back a little bit more, stay online, and hopefully pick up the points that way. And at the very end, cut some line, get up next to his door, and, you know, final impressions, right? Never have a first chance to make a first impression. Ding, 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 the more you know. There's uh, Brian Hartsock. He is Ryan Turk's spotter. He's in the head of Ryan and telling him what's going on, giving him some insights on car placement, who he's going against, what he should anticipate, what he should expect. Uh, speaking of Toyota, another Toyota partner. I know my man Rutledge Wood is watching. Thanks for tuning in, Rut. I know you got your GR Corolla most recently. And here we go, slide him left for Ryan Literal, or right for Ryan Turk. And look at that, Robin Ishida going one more time. So, you know, just kind of going back and forth with these one more times. And it's, and you know what's crazy about this? It's not, it, it's not 
you know, unanimous. Mm -hmm. We're not seeing unanimous decisions here already in the top 32. And that's just, again, splitting hairs where you kind of put your most emphasis on as far as judging. Well, uh, as uh, as we find out that Turk gets the win, Lorette, down to you real quick. Dean Carney, what's up? Yeah, of course, I just wanted to catch up with Dean because he has one of the highest horsepower cars on this track, 1200. Uh, are you finding it easy to navigate out here? Uh, yeah, we're, we're in a like tire conservation mode. Um, because almost all the other cars, all their power at the peak of their RPM, but our car makes so much torque, it's all the way in the RPM. It's, it's everywhere. Um, so our biggest concern over the weekend is actually managing the tires. And I was trying to be smart in the chase against Alec Robbins and uh, conserve the tire. I had something on the last corner, but almost bit me in the ass. I got uh, extremely lucky, I think, with it. So. We'll, uh, we'll go back. We have a couple of hours now before, before Tops I've seen to make a new game plan and uh, hopefully come out and be able to take the fight to Matt Field. Yeah, he's looking for that look, that luck going against Matt Field. Guys. Thank you so much, Lorette, and good luck to you. Dean Carney, like you said, going against Matt Field in the top 16. He has some time to take off the suit, catch his breath, and conserve some tires. All right, so uh, next up, Jeff Jones qualifying 12th. Going against reverse the numbers, qualifying 21st, Jonathan Castro. You got Los Angeles, that Evil Auto Works Nissan 370Z Supercharged LS versus Jonathan Castro, the Dominican Republic pilot in that Toyota GR86. Here we go, Jeff Jones initiates. Jonathan Castro right there immediately to the side of him. Jeff Jones taking out that inside clip into this first outside zone. Castro, not as much angle, didn't get all the way out there. Maybe a little scared, a little bit timid after exploding that inside clip. Jeff Jones in front of him. Second outside zone, now going to third outside zone. Castro a little bit maybe early on that transition. Has great proximity, but you can see it kind of coming out of angle a little bit. The higher speed track, maybe a little bit too much for this 86. We know Castro has the talent. We've seen it again, probably. I'll go on record as saying one of my favorite battles ever in form of competition. Yeah, Castro's uh, initiation here is really, really smart. He knows Jeff Jones is gonna go wide. He kind of stays midline and is able to keep up with him there. We're seeing, obviously, Jones crushing that first inside clip, and both drivers doing a good job through the first outside zone. Castro taking a narrower line through two, and then through this transition, he pops through the smoke maybe a little bit early, but he's able to get the car back out. Jeff Jones doing a pretty good job here all the way through three, and I think Castro played it a little bit safe. We've seen him chase super, super aggressive. Jones was very, very tight on inside clip one. Maybe it threw Castro for a bit of a loop the way that he punched that clip and threw it in the air, but Jones doing a good job here through outside zone two. Castro just you know, he, he's kind of making a, either a compromise online or he's making a compromise on angle and proximity, and he's, he's trying to figure out what's going to be the best method there. So when I think Castro, I think super, super proximity. He's willing yeah. to sacrifice a couple things to make sure that he's just leaving rubber on the side of the door. Seems like a tight, he's the tighter tracks favor him. Like I yeah. said, Orlando, um, uh, Seattle, you know, uh, Seattle's not the tightest track. It is tighter towards the end. I, I call it the funnel track. You know, it starts out big and just funnels grown and it gets really tight and really gritty. So I think that suits his style. Turk, a little bit of smile on his face there, talking to his team. Could breathe a sigh of relief against Ryan Literal. It was tight. I will <laughs> tell you, Ryan Literal gave it to him. And uh, again, Turk, a very busy man. We were over in, uh, in Australia and Sydney a couple of weeks ago. So he gets the win here. He's driving that Formula Supra, that Judd V10 powered Supra. That was a lot of fun. We got matching tattoos, him and I, and uh, Brian Hartsock, uh, Hartsock Motorsports. We all got uh, boxing kangaroos. Oh, nice. Yeah, 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 very, yeah. very. I good. almost got a shrimp on the Barbie. But my wife, my wife said no more food tattoos. Really? <laughs> but then I showed her the drawing. She's like, that is kind of cool. Uh, but yeah. Huh. So anyways, we vied with that. So Jeff Jones, Jonathan Castro. Now Castro will be out front. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not slamming Castro. You know I love you, Castro. But we need to see some high speed, big angle here out front. Because I know Jeff Jones, he's going to get aggressive. You know, he had a little bit of bad luck in Seattle. So he wants to really prove himself going into the second to last round. Here goes Castro. There's the angle. And we talked about it. Big angle there. Castro, he talks about proximity, big drift energy, Jeff Jones, and then Chase, look at that. It's that proximity, but look at Castro, very settled, the LTH, Dominican finest, GR86 Toyota, in that final outside zone, gets that tire off, but Jones, he is quite the contrary, so these guys are, I mean, states apart. You saw Castro get into the gravel, you saw Jeff Jones dive in on the inside, 
That's uh, that's not how you want to end it. That even auto works Nissan 370Z coming to a halt. Break it down, Jacob. Yeah. So Castro, you can see taking that similar midline starts the initiation really early, gets it in the slide. Jeff Jones able to get into the pocket. Castro could have been a little bit closer on that inside clip. Outside zone one looked great. Castro setting that angle. He didn't get on throttle when he was supposed to at the beginning of outside zone two, but does make the rest of the zone look really, really nice. And this is where Jeff Jones starts to fall apart a little bit. He gets lost in the sauce, deep in the smoke. That being said, Castro starts to go off course. So is it one of those where he got led that way? You know, this is where a side-by-side -side is probably going to happen because there's mistakes made on either side. We have to determine which zones are the most important, where the biggest mistakes were made. But I really like the way Castro gets through outer zone two. You can see him hold his zone, and it's almost like he's ready to take a nap through that zone. And then things get a little rocky as we get to three. Literally. Literally. And, uh, when a little Lenny Kravitz, are you going to go my way? <laughs> yep. Good song. I want to get away. I want to fly away. Like a dragonfly, a dragonfly. To the sky. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever watched that video? The extended version of Lenny Kravitz. I don't think I've seen the it's extended good. It's version. It's a good one. Shout out to Sam Nalvin. He showed me that. <laughs> yeah. I miss Sam. I haven't seen him in a while. Yeah, Sam's great. Here we go. Here's our BC Racing Go for Gold side by side. I think this is, again, our United States Air Force replay. Thank you to the United States Air Force for their support. So, again, look at initiations. You see Jeff on the left on, on the lead, Castro on the right. So, going to the inside clip, you see Jeff explode it. Good, good transition and good uh, proximity by Jeff. This last outside zone. Here goes Castro and Jeff into it. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay. It's interesting. It's really. Yep. I feel like it's going to come down to that last outside zone. I mean, the rest of it, there, there's mistakes made by either one in both the lead and the chase. But I think that last outside zone is where the judges are going to scrutinize and understand what's going on. All right. So uh, do we have a verdict also? And... Uh, And awaiting the score here, who's moving on to go against Ryan Turk, Jeff Jones, Jonathan Castro. You can see the Nissan 370Z, the Toyota GR86. Slide him left for Jones, right for Castro. One vote for Jones, one vote for Castro. And two votes for Castro. So split decision, but Jonathan Castro, two to one. Castro gets the win. He's going against his Toyota teammate. It's an all-Toyota battle. Castro versus Turk. Turk, you're a busy man. How's that uh, kangaroo tattoo healing up there, buddy? Mine's still, mine's still a little dry. Lorette, what do you think? Uh, I was talking to Ryan about altitude, so unfortunately I wasn't, I didn't hear what you said. I heard kangaroo, but tattoos. I don't know what Ask that was. Ask him doing. <laughs> kangaroo tattoo, that's what it was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, best friend tattoos. How nice for you two. That's <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> um, I was wondering if uh, the altitude out here is affecting your car at all. Yeah, for sure. It's um, um, a different environment, a less oxygen rich environment. So for turbo cars, especially this four cylinder, there's not a lot of displacement for it to suck more air into. So we're having to um, dial things up as, as, as far as we can go in a safe zone. And it kind of on that edge and and it's working great out here right now so uh the boys and the team and the papa Dagas team they all have it running really well and uh it feels awesome on track so okay and uh there was some mental adjustments uh that you made coming into this round and do you feel like at this point you're just you're starting to crank it up and get it dialed in yeah it was more from qualifying thursday into having a day off friday and then kind of re resetting myself to uh to do tandem today i've had phenomenal practice sessions all week long um, just didn't nail it in, in qualifying, so I wanted to just go out there in top 32, try to just lay down two really clean laps, and we did that. Literal was also running really well. It was a close battle. It was not unanimous, and um, just let, I'm, I'm pumped we got the win, and a lot of pressure off my shoulders now to go out in top 16 and hopefully keep moving on. Wonderful. So I think, Jared, uh, it's the power of the kangaroo tattoo that's helping yeah. Ryan dial it in here. It's still healing. <laughs> it's still healing outside of Salt Lake. Thank you, Ryan. Jared. Yeah, it's the power of the kangaroo. Mine's facing one way, his face the other way. Brian and I, we got double teamed on, and we're gonna we're gonna beat him up. But uh, we'll see uh, if if Jonathan Castro will uh, take him out again. We're at the halfway point of our Rockstar Energy Drink Top 32. When we come back, we'll continue with more action. Guess what? Next up, Simon Olson, Nick Novak. When we come back. I watched my first race yesterday. You're on the team, kid. It's orientation day. 
a new guy. Let's get you up to speed. Punch time! Your workspace is ready. Looks like you got a corner office. Be part of something greater. Toyota, let's go places. of Long Beach. Look at that. It is a beautiful day here in Southern California. KN, the official performance air filter of Formula Drift. NGK and NTK is more than just high ignitability spark plugs and precision sensors. They're about growing the car community. This is why they're introducing Shop Squad, an automotive meeting place for shop owners, service writers, technicians, students, and industry professionals to come together and share knowledge and encourage self-growth. Enrolling is free and you have access to on-demand training, digital newsletters, product launch information, and more. Woo! Rockstar Energy gets me energized so I can go out and send it. Hustle on. Welcome back to Utah Motorsports Campus. We are halfway through our Rockstar Energy Drink Top 32. My name is Jared Deanna. Joining me, Jacob Gittin, host of the Outer Zone Formula Drift podcast. Gittin, while the Gittin is good, not related, no relation to Von Gittin. So, uh, <laughs> right? No, no, I have, a, I have a sign that uh, Paco made for me that says Jacob Gittin's. And then they, no. they put Ryan Reynolds' face on it and stuff. Oh, yeah. got it. Ryan Reynolds, okay. Because it's Canadian. Ooh, go yes. ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Sorry. Um, yeah, so poutine powered. Simon Olsen, Nick Novak. This is our next battle, our first battle. Again, Simon Olsen, man, I just it just bears repeating. You know, he's been he's a, he's a Norwegian Norwegian drift champion, number two qualifier here this weekend. Uh, you know, he, he got set. He's been on the podium. He's been campaigning a, a 2JZ Supra, the all-new Mark V. Car looks great. Performance-wise, struggle bus a little bit. I'm just, I'm sorry, Simon. Just call it like, just you know, not not wildly part of the conversation. Would come in and dive in, but now top five, top five in standings. Two rounds left, including this round, right? Going against Nick Novak, it was no slouch. Nick Novak working with Jerry Yang Racing, obviously proven between all the vehicles that he has his hands on, um, notably Kazuya Taguchi, right? And uh, so Jerry Yang's been banging away for years, but Simon Olsen, man, this this should be a really fun battle. Simon Olsen, very proven chassis, obviously working with the Bocce's camp that feels suspension as chassis. Novak initiates dives on the inside. That is sketchy 5,000. That could have been an absolute T-bone steak. Cheese egg and Welch is great. Goes in that second outside zone. Here goes Simon Olsen, continues on the pace, and he does need to continue as Novak shuts it down. It's going to be a major advantage the way of Simon Olsen. And there goes Simon Olsen. Continues on. So, uh, unfortunately, Novak on launch. Houston, we do have a problem for Nick Novak, unfortunately. Yeah, I know they've been struggling with uh, some issues yesterday, and they thought, uh, maybe thought they had all the repairs ready to go, and then something happens here. It was, it was a really weird initiation. It was super early. I don't know if something in the car locked up, but Simon Olsen basically gets the free pass now to just drive the rest of the track. Watching the initiation, looks like he just overcooked it. 
But the scary part is he able he was able to get the car back under control because if it would have kept sliding and yeah. slammed into the wrong side of Simon, that could have been real bad. Well, it seemed like the car gripped up on initiation. It, it you know, like you said, suspension adjustments. You could see him kind of Feeling working, it out. working out, getting comfortable, but. To, an uninitiation gripped up shot on the inside. That's what we saw yesterday with uh, Cole Richards, right? Cole yep. Richards chasing down Joshua Love. Joshua Love went way too tight at angle, straightened out. But uh, Cole Richards shot on in the inside and, and very unassuming that inside clip, the, the base of it is just a big rubber base. You see how many times those get exploded. Never seen this but the base actually punctures his radiator. But keep in mind, Cole, his, uh, his radiator's on the front. A lot of these guys run that rear radiator setup, but the rad got punched. But um, let's talk about the championship. Simon Olsen currently sitting fifth. He is on the start line. Matt Field, he's in 16. Odie Bakshi, has he gone yet? No, he no. is not. He's next. He's yeah. next battle against Von Gittin Jr. Freddie, he's in. Chelsea Denofa, he is where? Where's he at? Did he? Uh, right there. No. Mike Power. So yeah, he's going against Mike Power. So. A few of those contenders are in, but still some. And, and again, we keep talking about it. Every dog has their day. Not calling anybody a dog. It's just an old adage. So just saying that the, the field of drivers is so talented, anybody could advance on, anybody could show up, anybody could win. Notably, Chelsea Denofa, points leader, has won twice this year. RTR, four times out of this year outside of that. Odie Bakshis, who campaigns that car, alongside Simon Olsen, three cars in total. You got Ben Hobson, who won the Prospect Championship yesterday. Simon Olsen fifth, Odie Bakshi's in third. So again, just, just a variety, a potpourri, if I may, of vehicles, drivers, nationalities, tire manufacturers, all of that. I think it's important to remember too, uh, Simon Olsen got fourth here last year. It was his mm. best event last year. So he's comfortable with this track. I know in practice, they had struggled a little bit. Mm. Uh, his spotter missed a flight coming out of Norway. He made it now. I, as, soon as, he, as soon as Matt's gotten his ear, everything calmed down. Simon was able to focus again. And, and we're gonna see here what, what's going on. The hard part now is with Nick Novak not able to complete that run, Simon has to decide how he needs to chase. You mm. don't want an inactive chase. That is a real possibility. So he still has to, you know, maintain some proximity. He's not maybe not sure if, if Novak had right. a mechanical issue. So there's there's a couple of factors here. But talking about the bracket, what is another crazy implication here is there is a real potential that Odie and Simon could be battling each other Ooh. in the top 16. That's so, early on with them currently sitting third and fifth, right? That's, yeah, no. Oh. No team orders no. then. No. Nope. I, I will 1,000% hope that they nope. don't do that, but I have to assume. No, and but that being said, Odie's got to get past Vaughn. Yeah. So it like it, there's there's so much still left to to play out here, and and I, I I'm already excited for Irwindale. Like <laughs> like already. Bro, we're not even we're <laughs> not know, even out of the 32, <laughs> Jacob. Relax, relax, just chill, just chill back, dude. <laughs> maybe maybe Nick chill back. Nick chill back. Yeah. <laughs> Jake chilling hard. Ooh. Yeah. Jake chilling. Jake chilling hard, baby. <laughs> That came from here in Greece. It was a Jim Connick grid. It said, chill hard. Jake, chilling hard. Here we go. <laughs> All right, Nick Novak will be leading Novak Racing, Cherry Yang Racing, BMW. Looks like he's a lot more confident. Ooh, and then, as I say that, you can see him weeble wobble, but he does not fall down in that first outside zone. Nick Novak, and like, like you said, you know, you got to think that Novak has an incomplete out of 0 to 10. We need you at a 7. You know, and I think that will suffice in order to get this advancement. But Novak put down a heater of a run. He did have some mistakes, but I think, you know, unfortunately for Novak, that mistake out of the gate, that's going to hurt him. And again, Simon wasn't the cleanest, wasn't the tidiest. Maybe needs a little bit of room, you know, maid service there to clean it up. Yeah, Simon did a good job here on initiation, kind of letting Nick do his thing out in the lead and understanding what that car is going to do. Because up until that point, he had no idea if Nick was even going to be able to negotiate the, the start of this race. And Nick uh, is doing everything he can. I mean, he put down a great job there in outside zone two, good transition into three. And then Simon here, once they get into three, is like, all right, I, this guy is still driving. I'm going to make sure that I get the proximity in, at least by the end of the run, and that's what he does. He did shallow up a little bit, but at the end of the day, with Nick not able to complete the first run, it's pretty much a wash, and Simon Olsen's going to get the win. And there it is. Yeah, let's make it official. Slide him left for Simon Olsen, and unfortunately, Novak with that mistake. That was, it was over before it began for Novak, and again, we'll see him in Irwindale, but Simon Olsen, Fifth in points, advances on, and like you said, Jacob, 
next battle. Odie Bakshi, a veteran. Von Kitten Jr., two-time champ. Before we see our next battle, let's go down to Toyota pilot Jonathan Castro, Dominican's finest, with uh, New Hampshire's finest, Lorraine Nickel. Oh, thanks, Jared. I really appreciate that. He just said New Hampshire's finest and Dominican Republic's finest. Uh, yeah, he'd like that, too. <laughs> uh, how's everything working for you out here, Jonathan? Good. This is a beautiful weather, beautiful venue, mountains in the background. This is one of my favorite tracks. One of my favorite of towns, I'll just say. Um, we're having a great time. The car is working good. We're feeling peaceful. So we're just having a good time, to be honest. Uh, some little things here and there, kind of normal when they're race weekend. Uh, we just actually took the car to take the transmission out and inspect some stuff that we felt with Jeff Jones. And um, we had a good time with Jeff, of course. Uh, Jeff's always a ripper. He will go for it. And we did our best to, to chase him. And uh, we did our lead. So we do our just focus it to do our job. and. Uh, trying to get to the box. Okay. Best of luck, Jonathan. We hope to see you there. Guys? Thank you so much. Lorette Nickel, yeah, I don't know if you knew that. She's from New Hampshire. I did not know that. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. So Lorette just uh, hosting Motorcycle Hall of Fame, one of the inductees, Travis Pastrana. So she was busy the other night. She uh, flew in and so hap always happy to have Lorette part of our broadcast team. She gets some great insight and some stories. Here we go, moving on to our next battle, Odie Bakshis, who is currently sitting, uh, was it third in points, coming this round of competition. He's busy traveling with his family, going across international, and uh, just a, a busy, busy man. Going against Von Gittin Jr., who's doing a split season, four rounds out of the eight. He's already completed two. We saw him uh, in Seattle. We saw him get the win, notably in Atlanta. 20 years later, 2004, Forsberg and Vaughn Gittin Jr. in the finals. Forsberg won in 04. At that time, got to say it, Vaughn was piloting an S13 240SX. And uh, that's what's really cool about it. Now look at him. He's a, he's a Ford spokesperson, uh, both on off-road, on-road, a busy, busy man. So Vaughn Gittin Jr., he is, uh, he's obviously, we're going to see him at Irwindale. So uh, we got... We have a cleanup crew. Oh, uh, yeah, it looks like we got some fluids there. So, uh, all right, let's take a look. You know, as, as we see the Blue Oval on track, RTR, such great success this year and over the years. Ford playing a major role in Formula Drift and drifting history. Just outside of Salt Lake City, this is playing host not only to round seven of the Formula Drift Pro Championship, but this is round four, the final round of the Link Engine Management Pro Spec Championship. You see him in to our top 32. Oh, look at that, pull that front right off. Looking way more settled than he was in that first run. Oh, Ford performance putting him up there, and check it out, big angle, Stuki. Didn't, wasn't focusing on, but saw a little twitch in that chase position. Now coming into that second outside zone. First outside zone, transitioning to the second outside zone. Frederick Osmo with the goal. Oh, knocks him out, throws some more angle at it. Chelsea stays in it. Holy cow! With the assist on the trip, Chelsea Nova standing in it. You saw Osmo come from the rear. A little problem being thrown up. I have never seen. I watched my first race yesterday. You're on the team, kid. It's orientation day. Hey, new guy. Let's get you up to speed. Lunchtime! Your workspace is ready. Looks like you got a corner office. Be part of something greater. Toyota, let's go places. streets of Long Beach. Look at that. It is a beautiful day here in Southern California. k the official performance air filter of Formula Drift. And there we are. The tires are warm. The track is clear. We're ready to set it. So a little bit of little bit of fluids there. Didn't know didn't know if it was oil, coolant. Somebody got scared, peed a little bit, yeah. you know? Sweat and horsepower. Sweat and horsepower. That's a good one. I like that. Yeah. Sweat and horsepower. Oh my gosh, that's so much horsepower. Just... There's a lot of horsepower. It's crazy how yeah, what these guys are. You got two into. G's on the line, baby. I know, I'm so excited for this battle. This is a good one. Yeah. Uh, just here's here's Odie, who has a championship at stake. 
You know, one gets one wants to get in the mix. He's going against Von Gittin Jr. Has let's just call it what it is. Not a championship at stake. Yeah. But but you know he has he has he has sponsors who you know watch him and he's having a good time. He's a little bit of a drift. Lorax kind of speaks for the trees. Speaks for the drifters. Um, that all new Toyota Tundra looking good. Solid solid run right there. Clearing up some debris, as uh, Ryan Sage likes to say. Yeah, when Vaughn said he was doing the split season, I knew it would have championship implications, and this is what we were. This yeah. this could be it. This is, right? this this is, is one of those things. Are yeah. you a Beastie Boys fan? Uh, not massive. I come no. from like the punk and metal side. I know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. Yeah, the, the, the beanies at the floor. <laughs> <laughs> the beanies at the floor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, uh, just I was in New York a couple weeks ago, and they uh, declared the corner of Paul's Boutique uh, Beastie Boys Square. So, and there's a, there's a famous line that I can't say the exact lyric, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna stick my bleep in the mashed potatoes. So, right. uh, I feel like Vaughn's gonna stick his Mustang in the mashed potatoes. That's uh, again, I, you know me, I kind of quote uh, pop culture things and lines and music, and it's just a lot of fun that I have. So. Um, yeah, that's that's what I feel. Vaughn is he's he's DJ Hurricane, mm. which was part of the Beastie Boys, and uh, yeah, I can't quote the exact line, but that's he's awesome. gonna stick his Mustang in the mashed potatoes. <laughs> so that's what it is. Here we go, Odie Boxies and Vaughn Gittin Jr. How, if you have to explain the joke, I don't know if it's as funny, no, no, but no extreme. joking here. Odie Boxies will lead in that field suspension. GT Radio S and T big massive angle. Yeah. There's Odie Boxies, Vaughn Gittin Jr. Late to initiate there, but definitely gets it right to the side of that S chassis. Vaughn Gittin Jr. should get fall by an 18th fairly equally matched here. So Odie Bosch is getting out to the edge of the course. Von Gittin Jr. a little bit of wavering there. Those bright green RCR wheels going around. Odie Bosch is very loud in that last outside zone. Von Gittin Jr., the DA wreath going into the galaxy mode. Feeling that energy. That was loud. That was very loud. Was and very like you loud. said, Hearst car is loud, like kind of poppy, but Odie's is consistently. Speaking of consistent, consistent initiation. Yeah, Odie's initiation was so fast. I didn't even think he was going to be able to pull the car back in to outside zone one, but he does, and then sets it up perfectly coming into outside zone two. Von Gittin Jr. doing what Von Gittin Jr. does, being an intimidator, being there in the mirror, kind of showing Odie, I'm, I'm right here the whole time. Didn't have a ton of proximity, but was definitely in the game the entire time. And you can see there, Von having to make a correction to be able to kind of keep up with the speed that Odie had during that initiation. And then Von gets into the pocket here, starts to pull up, puts all that Mustang power down, slides back in so he keeps the line. It's a great job. This is this is what a veteran does. This is what somebody like Von Gittin Jr. does. Gets the proximity, slides back into the pocket, gets the line. He's picking up points everywhere. It's like a multiplier. Yeah, I, I love what the judges said yesterday. They said, you know, for, for old schoolers, and they re-brought it back out. Look, there's a Chelsea Denofa fan. Yeah, he's, he's cheering them on. What, 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 what logos we got LZ. here? He, he just got it. He, yeah, a little LZ. So these guys, RTR camp. All right, uh, Vaughn Gittin Jr., he will lead. There's Simon Olsen looking on. So uh, he's looking, hey, I'm going to go against, you know, the, the boss man right now. But uh, he's still got a smile on his face. So Simon Olsen, again, just... Just knowing him through the years of Formula Drift, it seems like he's just he's just got a little bit of more settled nerves and, and confidence way about him. When, you, when you're not managing a team, when you're just showing up and being able to get in the car and you've got the confidence knowing that Odie Bakshi's is the guy overseeing the setup yeah. of your car, I mean, it takes a lot of weight off your shoulders. Yep. Here we go. Von Gittin Jr. will lead. The Monster Energy Neto Tire Ford Performance Mustang RTR Spec 5D Type S. Got Nitto tires on the corner. Taking a look at Odie, that field suspension. Inyo Soil Pedal Commander. He's got GT Radials on the corner. New tire for him. Nitto been supporting Von Gittin Jr. both on road and off road. Come from some Ultra Four Victory. I know he raced uh, Cran and he's been doing a lot of different things in different motorsports. Him and his uh, fun hammer teammate RTR, Lauren Healy. Was that, uh, was that Brockway? Here we go. All right, so here we go. And there is Von Kitten Jr. initiating. Big angle there. Jump, excuse me, I have to say Chelsea, but uh, Von Kitten Jr. Didn't get all the way out, but look at Odie overshoots that first outside zone and the second outside zone with Von Kitten Jr. Now, Odie seems to be a little shaken, and Von Kitten Jr. two wheels off. That's really going to disrupt Odie. We saw that after the car, but it doesn't shake him too much. Hectic. Yeah, that's a, that's a great word. So uh, as the field suspension team looks on, you can see the the whole camp there. Yeah, that was uh, yeah that was really hectic. 
um, as we go to the replay here, Vaughn getting all the way wide, big initiation there. Odie kind of waiting to see what Vaughn was going to do. Vaughn gets, Vaughn gets back on the power, but Odie goes wide. Odie goes really wide and then kind of almost has to reinitiate there. I'm sure the Jets will be looking at that. But what's incredible is seeing how Odie is able to pick up speed, but then Vaughn goes wide. Wow. And then now we get into outside zone three, and who's going to go wide here? No one. They get into the pocket, and Odie realizes that he's kind of fallen back. So that was, uh, yeah, hectic's the only thing I can think of. Yeah, that was. I think that absolutely really encapsulates <laughs> what went down here with Odie going long. Vaughn gets long here. How does Odie react to it? He actually wasn't too phased. Look at that. I mean, no. he stayed on the line. He stayed true to course. Stayed the course. Iceberg dead ahead, but the iceberg was a Vaughn Gittin Jr. Yeah. iceberg. But he did. He was not phased. He stayed course. And Vaughn held on to it, even going off-roading again. I mean, it shows why he's able to do both, but... So, yeah, yeah Odie going off into the rumble strips, beyond the rumble strips. I don't know. Three off, three off. So, basically, kind of a wash in the second, the second battle. So, we go back to the first battle. Was it three off for Vaughn? Uh, oh. So there's oh, no. No. those. Oh, there it is. Right on the, he's yeah, coming Trace, past yeah. the line. I mean, he did go beyond the white line. It's yeah. not just the gravel. No. I could, put it, I could put it back to hockey, where in hockey, the puck has to go past the line. Can't just touch the line. There has to be a gap between it. And that's, right. Yeah. Exceed that's, the line. Yeah, exactly. Exceed so. all of it. Yeah, and you know, like tennis, right? And you yes. Know, the US Open in New York was just on, so. I believe it should default to the first run. Kind of the judges really analyzing the runs here, all the different angles. So let's let's default and defect back to the first run with Odie leading. Because again, I'm I'm gonna elaborate what kind of before we talk to the judges, because they are saying on that second run, three wheels off for Vaughn, three wheels off for Odie. That's gonna default to uh, to this run. So Odie leading, Vaughn getting junior chase. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, Odie in the lead looks like he got yep. most of the zones, but in the chase, Vaughn missed a little bit, but Odie also overshot a little bit in a couple spots. Ah, it's and, and also, I want to clarify this. Uh, here we go. Slide him left for Odie, right for Vaughn Gitt Jr. One more time, and there we go. So, I think, I think, if anybody, I think Odie, I think Vaughn, I was kind of leaning towards, more towards Odie. I thought he had a really good run. Vaughn had a good chase, but when in doubt, OMT out, yeah. right? So you're seeing Dean Connery, the, the Irish gentleman, hanging out there. There's Chelsea Dernopa's wife, uh, as we know, Chelsea. He's coming up uh, in just a few battles, three battles away from now. So an OMT between Vaughn Gitt Jr. and Odie Bakshi. So I, I want to reiterate there. On that second run with Vaughn Gitt Jr. leading, Odie chasing, Odie overcooked in that first outside zone. That's where the three went off. So that's an incomplete for Odie. As Vaughn Gitt Jr. continued the pace, he went three off on that second outside zone. And again, some people are claiming two and a half. The judges analyzing, looking at it, like you said, hockey, tennis, regardless, he went off. So there it is, one more time. Dylan Hughes, Diego Higa, our next battle. There is Vaughn's weapon of mass destruction, running those uh, wide offset wheels and uh, running the turbo fans, the uh, vanity discs. And um, Dylan Hughes, Diego Higa. Dylan Hughes, who we've seen just, uh, again, peaks and valleys. He really beats himself up, but uh, again, he is uh, definitely a fierce competitor. Diego Higa finding his way with this Diego Higa JDM Supreme 86 used to be an FRS, but uh, again, JDM Supreme collecting those cars. I saw your podcast talking about that, and with uh, with Mike Power, yeah, has a little sound bite there, but collecting these antiquities of the drifting world. Yeah. You know, the top secret S15, one of my favorite cars, mm. by the way, he owns that, and a few other vehicles. But uh, again, JDM Supreme com contributing to the Brazilian pilot of Diego Higa, a big talent coming to us from Brazil, also in the uh, hyperdrive. My boy Rutledge Wood, like I said, he was watching. That was a show on Netflix. Uh, fans starting to come in, uh, and that, that's what's great. But uh, here we go. Yeah, lost, look at that. Yeah, lost them out on the lawn, got the umbrellas out, ready here for, ready for a good time. He got he got had some great practice runs too. I've been kind of sitting up here chatting with the spotters, trying to get some inside info and and watching all the practice stuff. And Diego Higa is, I think, like he's really starting to mend to this track and and do well and pick up the zones. And he's he's now figured out the speed. Mm. Like Formula Drift is so fast, and anybody coming from any other drifting series coming here, it's the first thing they say. And he's starting to figure out the speed. Okay. So now he is a very very dangerous driver. Okay. 
Well, again, just uh, that, that vehicle, talk about the, the history that was piloted by Ryan Turk back in the day. It was uh, purchased by JDM Supreme, and now it's come out of retirement, and now Diego Higa is behind the wheel. Dylan Hughes will be leading Diego. Oh, look at that. 100, 100, I don't know if that's locked and loaded there. Uh, oh, Diego. We're talking about the speed. Yeah, he found it. Got right to the side of Dylan the Dozer Hughes. Dylan Hughes, that Permatex vehicle, running that optimum easy livery here for this round. And there goes Dylan Hughes, that last outside zone. That got a little sketchy 5,000 there in that first outside zone. That was a, that got a little hairy. Yeah, I don't know if Dylan shored up, and that's why Diego tapped him. Uh, I do want to see the replay to understand exactly how that whole, tra that whole thing transpired. But Dylan taking the wide line on initiation, comes around, flicks it, and it looks like he, he does. So Dylan straightens a little bit in order to make the first inside clip, and then Diego Higa, I mean, he's on the line he's supposed to be on and just kind of slides into the back end of Dylan Hughes. After that, though, it kind of bumped Dylan back into the correct spot, so Diego Higa almost helping Dylan finish off this run, and, you know, the rest of the zones looked pretty good, and, and Higa was a little bit shallow trying to get that proximity to watch right here. Dylan straightens a little, right there. You see the wheels turn, and then boop, and gets him back online. So Diego Higa was the reason why Dylan Hughes was able to hit outside zone one. Right, he kind of gave him a little assist, a little yep. bump. Not a bump trap, but a bump. Bumped bump push. drift. Yeah, bump push. drift. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then Dylan, the rest of the run, I think he kind of realized he got lucky coming into outside zone three here, sets it and forgets it, while Diego Higa trying to play the catch up game and get some more proximity. So, we'll see what happens. Is the fans hanging out on the hill? Hanging on the hill. Hanging out on the hill. Bad, 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 bump, 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 bump. It's a lot of fun. There we go. Hey, there we go. Paying attention. Out in the weeds there. It's a good spot though. I mean yeah, there's so many spot. cool spots to, to view the race here. Yep. Yeah, so many, so many good spots. Thank you, sir. As we are getting them re-racked. Yeah. The sand people. Don't worry, they'll come back in a greater numbers too. <laughs> Star Wars reference? Yes, no, no, you, no you got me there. Okay. No, no, okay. Victory for the fans. Again, the, the umbrellas are key. Again, about was it 4,500? 4, 4,500 feet elevation? Yep. So uh, might as well be walking on the sun. We're up here. R.I.P. Rest in peace. R.I.P. Yeah. The shape of an L on his forehead. I mean, I hope not. Do you think they did that? No. No. Gosh, no. I'm not. I'm not belittling. Obviously, homeboy, Smash Mouth. By no means. Just giving a little R.I.P. Rest in peace. Did not know him. It's not friends with him, but obviously played a major role. Yeah, everybody knows that. Knows those Carson songs. Daly wrote a great post about him. Yep. Was a, yeah, if you're looking for uh, how instrumental he was in music, he wrote a really good post about him. Mm. So check it out. All right, here we go. Let's alternate the order here as we are seeing now Diego Higa out front. Diego Higa. And uh, chasing, uh, you know, I really, I think there's a, I think Diego Higa might have a little bit of an advantage here because of Dylan Kelly comes out of drift but gets a little assist. So uh, we definitely, you know, if, if you're uh, Dylan Hughes, you really need to step it up here. Let that pressure be known. And Diego Higa, big angle there. You said he's coming to his own here. He's finding that high speed. Dylan the Dozer Hughes transitions. Both these guys with the two J's under the hood. And there it goes, Dylan Hughes. Don't know if there's contact. We're going to have to take a look at that Permatex Optimum RTV vehicle, the grave car for the grave flavor of that Permatex. Optima RTV. Yeah, Diego Higa, this is what I was talking about. This is what he was doing in practice. Watch all the zones, and then, but very much, you need to watch Dylan Hughes because he knows he's kind of behind. But Diego Higa, inside clip one, crushes it. Outside zone one, crushes it. Coming into two, you see that little bit of uh, that initiation spot that the judges want, but great angle, holding it. Could have could have got a little bit more angle, but he held the line, and that's what we're looking for. And then Dylan Hughes, little boop, and Higa holds onto it. We've seen a couple of guys, like, come off course and, and catch that the, the, the gravel and spin out, but he go, keeps his foot into it and pulls himself back onto the track. So Dylan Hughes, I mean, this is going to be interesting. I think we need to understand fault for all of these situations, but Diego Higa had a great job out in the lead. Dylan Hughes able to kind of pull the car back in, settle the angle as they come through the transition. You are sitting in smoke there for what feels like forever, and that's where we get that contact. Dylan Hughes comes out of angle pretty heavily, and the judges are taking a look at all of the replays that they've got on hand here to understand the full situation. Yeah, what do you guys think? Diego Higa from Brazil, Dylan the Dozer Hughes. Where are my Dylan Hughes fans at? D 
Diego Higa, does he have what it takes? Dylan Hughes going for it. Man's got a James Dean shirt on there. Got to just generic general fan, excuse me, with the Formula Drift gear. Thanks for supporting. Got a Cletus McFarland shirt on. Shout out to Cletus McSkeeter. Skeeter do. Yep. Sweating it out. Sweating it and getting it. There we go. That's that's yours. So sweating and getting it. Ah, all right. <laughs> I mean, if it's been bestowed upon me, I guess uh, I got a little bit now. <laughs> well, well, it's, it's, work, it's workshop. So, yeah. Got a Matt Field hat. So, again, just the, the love being spread all around the paddock. What do you got? What shirts are those? Pin it to win it, Chelsea Denofa fans. Again, any hood hatch or door. See if Nick Novak loses his roof. Like in Irwindale a few years ago, got a donut fan. Again, thanks for buying the merch, man. That's that's awesome. Who do you think, Di Diego Higa, Brazil? Or uh, do you think Dylan Hughes gets the win? All right. Those guys, they're not moving their arms. They no, mm -hmm. not impressed. Not impressed yet. Slide him left for Hughes, right for Higa. One more time. One more time. So another OMT across the board. And. Uh, Hey, Ryan, Lontane, put your headset on real quick. We'll go back to one more time, but uh, they're not even in the burnout box, so we do have a moment here. Um, again, we're seeing two one more times back to back. We'll revisit Odie and Git, but Hughes and Higa, uh, you know, there was some contact made. Did Dylan push Diego out of the way? Was Diego at, Diego at fault? Dylan had kind of a, an okay initiation. What did you guys see? We saw the same mistake from both drivers in the lead, just in different parts of the track. Um, Dylan Hughes was going wide on inside clip one, had to slow down, had an extra handbrake pull, and Diego was right there with him, so he did make contact with him. And then while Diego was leading, he had a great lead up until the very last corner where he was going too wide on outside zone three, and he needed to slow himself down to stay on the track, and that's where Dylan made contact with him. So they both made the same errors in the lead position, like I said, just in different parts of the track, but both of those errors threw off the chase car, one at the beginning, one at the end, but since they're the equivalent mistake, uh, we're going to see that one more time. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Like, and, and Jacob, you called that on the beginning, kind of gave him that that bump assist, right? Mm -hmm. Both, but just at different portions. Like like Ryan was saying, just to reiterate it, Dylan got the assist by Diego on the outside zone one. Diego got the assist on outside zone three. Yeah, yeah, both contacts, so cancel them out. Okay. Go one more time. I think that's uh, that's always, like I said, when in doubt, OMT, I'm out. So here we go, back to the one more time between Odie Bakshis and Von Gittin Jr. Odie will lead qualifying 15th, Von Gittin Jr. qualifying 18th. Let's see if they've learned from their mistakes in previous battles. Again, both of them going three wheels off independently on that second battle and that second run, so here we go. Odie Bakshis initiates. Manji initiation into that inside clip. Von Gittin Jr. drops into pocket into formation. A lot more refined than their first battle in the second outside zone. You can see Odie Bakshi's big angle there. Car gets, gets a little disrupted on the edge of the course. Odie Bakshi's Von Gittin Jr. right there. Backs off a little bit. Let's see if he can regain that proximity. Big, massive angle for both the guys. Von Gittin Jr. shoots a little bit inside. You saw him get into that last outside zone. The car grips up. Those Nitto tires hook up and shoot him on the inside. The GT radials turn and burn for Odie Bakshi's. So with this track, initiation is everything, especially in the chase. And you see Odie go wide, and Vaughn just wait until he comes across and then grabs Z-brake and gets in there. And then Vaughn just tries to sit in the pocket through the smoke, through all of this, as Odie is just ripping through this track. It is so fast, this car. But Vaughn getting doing a great job falling back in behind Odie before the transition point so he can get some clean air. As Odie does a great job through the outside zone three, Vaughn cuts a little bit of the line to try and catch back up. So great initiation, inside clip, Looks good, outside zone one. Vaughn could have been a little bit deeper in there, but trying to stay out of the smoke as they come through two. You see Odie starting to make a couple of corrections, little weeble wobble back and forth. Vaughn cutting a little bit of angle to keep the proximity, but it's keeping the line. As our drone comes over top here, you can see where that gap starts to get established near the end. So the only spot that Vaughn really should have cleaned it up is just in that half, last half of outside zone three. Wow, I, I cannot get yeah. over how fast Odie's car is getting. Yeah, it is It is just hooking up and, and that side bite, you know, and, and Vaughn is always touted as having really good side bite, but yeah. uh, just Odie just even faster with angle, just finding that real sweet spot, not, not too far, not too shallow. 
we've seen these RTRs where they'll they'll throw an insane amount of angle and then get back on the throttle and just launch. Right. Where where any other car would be shooting off track somehow, whatever magic they've got going on in those cars, they're they're able to get on the throttle and just launch out of it like nothing ever happened. And it's really proven to pay off yeah. for them. Yeah. With with four with four podiums in six rounds. Here we are, round seven. One more round left. If you haven't already purchased your tickets, uh, again, just in about a month. Talking October 13th and 14th, Friday the 13th. Ooh, we're getting tattoos, baby. Let's go. All right, let's go. <laughs> I'm down. Yeah, you got to fill one of your hexagons. I got to fill a couple spots. Right? Yeah, let's hexagons. Do it. Yeah, yeah, okay, hexagons. hexagons. Yeah, yeah, you got hexagon tattoos. You and Kyle Cross. I, I don't know. know whose idea it was for. I got, I got it. I it's okay. It's okay. okay. I'm just. I'm, I'm, it off I'm, the record. I'm just off the record. All right. Here we go. Vaughn Gittin <laughs> Jr. Odie Boxies. Vaughn will lead. Monster Energy Nitto Tire. Ford Performance Mustang RTR. Spec 5 FD Type S. Again, wrapped around those RTR wheels. Odie Boxies has the GT radials wrapped around his wheels. He's got the field suspension on the corners. Again, a lot of knowledge there that's being shared across the board. Ben Hobson, pro spec champion, and of course Simon Olson. Simon Olson waits in the wings. Who's he going against? The captain of RTR or captain of the field suspension team? Bonkin Jr. initiates. Odie Bakshi's tucks on in. See a different angle of that as Odie Boshies has to back off, or is Von Kitt Jr. taking some angle out of it right on knee jerk reaction here on that second outside zone? Here comes Von Kitt Jr. into that last outside zone. Odie Boshies, a little bit of dirt being thrown up there by Von Kitt Jr. Where no, we know Vaughn is an Ultra Four champion, but uh, now's not the time to get into the dirt, Vaughn. Save that for your, uh, your Baraki and your off road King of the Hammers action. And this is what I was talking about. Watch how Vaughn throws a bunch of angle in, gets on the throttle, and then just walks away. And Odie is trying to find an answer to it. We get a lot of angle there, almost 90, and then Vaughn gets on the power and starts to gap away. That being said, he missed a good chunk of outside zone one. Odie making corrections to try and get that proximity back, but he is staying online, and that is the important part. He's staying in the zone and still picking up speed. Now, as we get into outside zone three, Odie drops a couple of wheels off, Vaughn drops a couple of wheels off, do we, do we go to a side-by-side? -side? Maybe. Do we get another one more time? Maybe. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I kind of I kind of have an idea. Yeah. I kind of have an idea. But uh, it's it, it's amazing, though, how these two chassis are able to perform in two very different ways. Watching these cars go through the track and the way that the attitude of the car changes, the way that they act on throttle and off throttle is so different. And that's what makes Formula Drift so amazing is you can have two completely different ways of getting around the same course and have two very, very different results. Yep. So, yeah. The GoPro live camera, capture the fans, see some Forsberg shirts there, and there you go, you called it, Jake. The go for gold side-by-side -side BC Racing. So yeah, take a look here. What we're going to be watching for is obviously proximity and line. Those are the two main things. Odie does a better job through outside zone one. Into outside zone two, Odie is way behind and Vaughn is keeping up there, but they both have the line covered. It's just a proximity, so Vaughn might get some points there. Now we get into outside zone three. This is where we get wheels dropping. Vaughn was shallow through outside zone three in his chase, but both of them are really deep in the outside zone three uh, on Vaughn's lead. So I don't know. I don't know. I mean, what do you guys think? Is it Odie Bakshi's advancing on? Odie currently sitting fourth in points. Or is it Vaughn Gittin Jr. advancing on? Winner in Atlanta. RTR with so much success this year. Odie and his camp with so much success this year. I mean, you know, Odie, you know, we talk about Vaughn being a two-time champion, but Odie has always been part of the conversation as far as championship. His consistency is key, just, I always say it, always a bridesmaid, never a bride. Will it pay off for him this year? Yeah, he's, I mean, he's, he's just always part of the conversation. He's he's one of those drivers, he's one of the greatest drivers to never win a championship. There's a few there of go. them, um, and Odie is definitely in the in the, the main discussion of that. Look at that house divided. We got a Matt Field on him, a Matt Field shirt on him, and then we got a we got a James Dean shirt on her. Mm -hmm. Oh man, this is Vet versus Mustang. I mean, you, who's buying dinner tonight? You know, I mean, oh, and the little girl's got Toyota on. You guys are house divided all across the board. Gotta love it. Yeah, like everyone cheering for different people. Absolutely. It's great. Yep. All right. So the plot thickens, still awaiting the outcome from our judges. Doom, 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 doom. Right. 
The pressure mounts. Odie Bakshis, fourth place in points. Chelsea Denofa leads. And here we go. Odie Bakshis, 323, 40 points behind. Oh, one more time. One, one more time. time. Another one. That one's for the fans. DJ Khaled in the building, another one. Let's go golfing. Yo, another wow. one more time. Robbie, Ryan, and Brian up here chatting. Look at this. The fans are fighting. Just kidding. <laughs> hey, uh, Lontane. Lontane, put your headset on. You, uh, Robbie. Robbie, you do it. Robbie, you want to talk smack? Not smack, but obviously elaborate, please, on, uh, on why, why, why we couldn't land on it. So uh, both of the drivers, I mean, Fabulous jobs, and it seemed like Odie's lead was a little bit better, so really, really was about to go one way, but we just couldn't ignore the proximity that uh, JR had when he was in the chase. So I think if Odie can get closer, or if JR can be on a better line when he's giving chase, that's probably uh, where it's going to divide the winner on okay. um, the next run. All right, well, I know the spotters are here right next to us, and, uh, and you talk about Proximity, closer, get on the line. I mean, we are really splitting hairs. And what what I'm okay with these one more times is we're not saying who sucked less. Yeah. What we're saying is they're really equally matched, and just that small little refinement could be that X factor as we reference in qualifying. But this is a battle we would normally see in like top four. Here we and are in 32. It, exactly. We're getting it so much earlier. So. I, I understand why it's so tough to make these decisions. We're, we're, we're talking about greats here going head to head in some of the best built cars we've ever seen in drifting. So. All right, let's move on. Trenton Beecham, Christos Blush. You were talking about Beecham, how yep. impressive he was in qualifying, even prior to qualifying. And you, the Oracle here, <laughs> says, yeah, he's, he's going to do good. And sure as you know what, yep. he, uh, he qualifies 10th. And he's going against Christos Blush. I chatted with the spotter a little bit earlier, and uh, they've unleashed some uh, some more horsepower in this bad boy. So yeah. got a, I got a little, you know, some inside baseball. And, Obviously. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to see how this run goes. Wait, this is no baseball. <laughs> Trenton Beecham will lead Christos Blush giving chase. Let's see how Beecham handles this initiation. Christos Blush, we haven't seen him for a few rounds. Let's see if he shook off those cobwebs or shook off that carbon Kevlar off that front. No, he does Ooh, and look at that loss of angle. And there goes Christoph into the side. Christoph goes into the dirt. Let's see a different angle there. Obviously an exciting angle. We want to see the two serum as Beecham. Wow, right there on that course edge. Wow, so that LS powered, both these guys LS powered, excuse me. But uh, again, you talked about Beecham. He is absolutely delivering for you there, Jacob. Yeah, I really want to see what happens here, uh, especially at initiation, to understand um, what happened. Because it kind of got a little wonky, but we see a, a straight line initiation approach from Trenton Beecham. And then Kristaps really pushing things in as they get to outside zone one. Beecham then, tre tre uh, wow, huge angle as he enters into two. And Kristaps tries to follow him through. Trenton somehow yeah. is able to hang on to it. And it throws Kristaps out. And we know this guy can drive well angry. And Kristaps doing everything he can to get back out. Well, Trenton is able to basically ride the edge of the asphalt through the rest of the run. So you see some input there from Kristaps as we get that drone view. You can see into the cockpit. And right here, Trenton just throws on the angle. And Kristaps doesn't mm. really know what to do. But Trenton's able to hold that angle coming into the zone. Was it perfect? No, is it what the judges wanted? Maybe not, but it looked really cool. That's and that sure. really, and that really just dis disrupted Kristoff. Yeah, yeah. And you saw him; he, his front left did tap that back right of Trent Beecham. So the question is, if you can throw that angle and still hold it through the zone, is it okay? Oh, we're it, dialing in. We're hacking the ooh, planet right now. Oh right man, here. entering the matrix. Mm -hmm. uh oh, 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 see, oh no! Oh, he's stealing his seat. It's my seat now. Look at me; I'm the captain now. <laughs> Rocking that KB hat, KB forever, nice hat. Shit. Where's Tomato Town? Where is Tomato Town? Or is it? Or is it? Sorry. Or is it? Or is it? Is it Tomato Town? Tomato Town? Tomato Tomato. Potato Town. Catch your cats up. Yep. No idea what Tomato Town is, but uh, hopefully he'll catch up. Dun -dun -dun. Taking a look at Odie and his camp. They are under the hood. They're trying to crack the code. Again, the laptops are out on the uh, Von Gittin Jr. side. Just trying to see what they're doing here. Cooling off the car. I mean, 
Looks like they got the blower in there. Yeah, they're just keeping it cool. Larry Chen, how are we doing, buddy? I was spraying water over the uh, the intercooler. Okay, what's going on here? Talking to Chris Tops. Got to pull the hood. They're popping the hood, just uh, making sure something's up. But uh, Chris Tops is uh, taking a look underneath. I wonder if what Chris Tops went through that first inside clip, if it hit something. That curb on inside clip one has been doing damage to cars all weekend long, and I'm wondering if that's what's going on here. Kristaps obviously looking pretty concerned. All right. This, this could be a situation that we saw with uh, ProSpec where let's see if that inside clip got caught by Trenton's car and shot into Kristaps. Oh, it did. We've had the same incident twice. No way. So the base off inside clip one gets pulled under by Trenton's front wheel and gets launched into the front end of Kristaps' car. Yeah, I wondered about that because I saw his bumper and I thought it maybe knocked it. Yeah, that's uh, that shot and ripped that wow. thing. Wow, is that the belt? What are we looking at? Yep, oh, he's pissed. It pulled his belts off. Wow. So, yeah. Would this be a comp timeout? Does he have time to fix the vehicle if he can't move on? Like, so this gets interesting here. Ooh. Oh, HGK coming off. A lot of cars on grid running those uh, HGK carbon cut flower yep. body kits. All right. So is this, so here's, here's, a, here's food for thought. Beecham goes off, here's that base, ready? And then shoots it. Boom. Yaw. So. So would this be caused by Beecham and it gets shot off? And then also food for thought is if if Beecham caused that, causes damage to the vehicle, would, you know, yesterday was an interesting scenario with the Love and Cole Richards scenario. Right. But analyzing it, and I had some conversations with some people, I won't name <laughs> names, and would that be considered damage caused by Beecham to Kristaps' car if he's not able to fix it and not able to run, would Kristaps move on because of the damage caused by Beecham? Not saying that Beecham caused it. I'm just right. giving I'm giving parables and scenarios here, of course. right? So is there a potentiality of Kristaps moving on but not advancing any further than 16 because he wasn't able to fix his car within the time limit? That, ah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, is that is that kind of a, a scenario? Because yesterday we said, all right, go fix your car and then go run the second half right or you know it was because it, because of the delay it was it was really it was really interesting it was it was a scenario as kevin wells described it uh blazing a new trail so there we i mean look at all the the, the crucial parts that are right there on the on the business end of that vehicle so it wasn't a part of trenton's car i mean if it was something where a part of his car came off and then caused damage to Kristaps, then that's one thing. But this is a, a marker on track that Trenton, you know, he hit, which in theory he kind of has not a right to hit it, but you are, are allowed to hit that cone without a major detriment. So it's a really, really interesting scenario. And it, what's crazy is that it's happened twice now. So there's going to be a lot of conversation about this. This is something that's going to be talked about for a long time. But well, I'm, I'm already hearing judges say, all right, that cone's got to go next year. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah, they <laughs> uh, turned to around be quite honest. All right. You know, how did we get here? Well, Von Kitten Jr. and Odie, uh, they are going a second one more time. So I hate calling them one more time for that reason. They're going to run again. They're going to run it so again. They're running it again. So uh, again, the, uh, the deal breaker, the ice breaker, the risk taker, and the advancer, we will see who advances on. Again, we will go back to it one more time between Odie and Vaughn Gittin Jr. Also, Dylan Hughes and Diego Higa. Odie sitting third. Matt Field, I said that Odie was, uh, that he was, yeah, so he was third. Yep. Sorry, third and then fifth. And uh, you can see these are the points. All right, let's let's uh, let's learn more about Team Feel as uh, we find out who's going to be up to the next in the burnout box. What's up guys, Odie Bukshis here. So from 2022 into this season, I made some massive changes. 
I was running a two car team, my pro car and the pro spec car driven by Evan Bogovic. We just wanted to really step it up. We had a good formula and we just scaled it up. Now going into 2023, I'm running a three car team. My S15 driven by me, Simon Olsen's driven a pro car that's a brand new build and the pro spec car is being driven by Ben Hobson. So far, we're having a great time. The cars are dialed, they're running great. We did so much work in the off season, getting them up to the competitive uh, spec that they are. All the drivers got multiple test days, so we're coming in swinging. So even though I've tasked myself with being a team manager of three cars, I am still the driver of one of those cars. I still have to carry the burden of being ready as a driver and also the burden of making sure that all three cars are running. I got a great team behind me, but I got to make sure everyone's working together. It's this kind of stuff that keeps me going. It's what gets me out of bed. Just always continuously improving and building on this business model. It's a bit of a challenge, but it's also that energy that I need. It's, it's kind of what I live for. So I'm very much looking forward to running all three cars this season. And we'll see where it goes into multiple seasons. One of the other big changes going into this season is the title sponsor. Now the title sponsor is my company, Fuel Suspension. And I'm absolutely thrilled to have it on all the cars. Ben Hobson's car is the pedal commander car. Fuel suspension still a very big presence on the car, but my car and Simon's car, Fuel suspension's title, so feels great to All right, be finding a little bit of inside there. As we can see, Christos Blush. We got one minute left for Christos Blush. But again, don't know if uh, what's if that was a comp timeout or was that just a 10 minute allotment? I know, never mind, we'll go back. Yeah. All right, for Chris Dobbs. One more time. That was a comp timeout called. Okay, so we are back to the line and we are taking a look at, uh, this is Dylan Hughes and Diego Higa. Dylan Hughes will lead Diego Higa, giving chase. Here we go with that. Optimum RTV Easy Permatex vehicle goes in the outside zone. And now you can see a lot more settled than that first time. Diego Higa, he knows he can apply the pressure here to Dylan Hughes. We saw it on that first battle. This is the one more time. Diego Higa coming out of angle there. And now in that final outside zone, Dylan Hughes explodes it, almost gets into the dirt. He does exceed it a little bit, but using that coarse edge is Dylan Hughes. And like I said, Diego and him really pushing, especially on that first battle. What did, what did you see? Anything stand out to you there, Jacob? Yeah, Dylan definitely put down a great lead run there, and Higa had some weird moments in and around outside zone two. So that's the part that I very much want to focus on as we see Chris Dops there chatting with Kevin Wells, obviously discussing the situation. But let's take a look at the replay here. Dylan going wide, Higa timing that initiation good, matching the angle. Dylan having to shore up a little bit to make that inside clip one. We almost had a repeat of what happened before. Dylan doing a great job to get the car out to two with that left foot brake. And then Higa reeling him in, trying to get that proximity, but almost driving straight. And you can see by missing that last part of outside zone two, it really messes up the rest of the run for him. Well, Dylan was able to keep the correct line. So Higa made some compromises in order to get like the proximity back that really messed up the line for the rest of it. So Dylan did a great job out there in the lead. You can see him holding the car back there with the left foot brake, able to swing the back end around, getting back on throttle while holding the left foot brake down. And then Higa almost straight here, causing him to shoot a little bit wide to get back on the throttle early to make him shallow. It, uh, yeah, he, he, it looked like he Look at this. a bit. Diego, he's, uh, again, horsepower sweat. Well, that's, that is Christoph's oh, no, horsepower Christophe. sweat. That's Christoph's vehicle. Wow. So that, that? Yeah, that, so that's Christoph's vehicle. So that was, sorry to clarify, I'd cut you off there, Jacob. Talking to the guys over here, they said that was a competition timeout. Five-minute allotment. The car is uh, obviously not not 100. So, uh, again, Christoph's. I, I wonder if we'll start seeing guys now running like a shield or anything like a splash guard underneath the front end of the car. I mean, it, that's I mean uh, over the, it, kind of a fluke. Um, yeah. I mean they have they've been running blast bash bars, but yeah, that blast shield. That's I mean not not that far fetched, but you obviously you know that contact's going to happen. But yeah. with something like that, that's just such a fluke, unfortunately. And. 12 hours of each other but it could be it could be i mean the, you've got curbs too we've got different tracks that have high curbs and, and transition points so you never know what could happen so he got off the line here yeah diego he got leading dylan hughes giving chase diego he initiates into that first outside zone goes diego he gets all the way out there dylan hughes 
buried in that smoke, but now in the second outside zone, you can see really good mimicking of the angle. These guys almost simultaneous and uh, absolutely mirroring each other's angle. Diego Higa, like you said, seems to be finally hitting his stride in that FRS, the 86. So uh, again, great effort there by both the drivers. Anything stand out to you, Jacob? Yeah, uh, how much Dylan Hughes is driving beyond his years. So Higa here, not a ton of angle, but able to push himself out through inside clip one. It gets into outside zone one a little bit early. Dylan Hughes doing everything to predict that. Through outside zone two, you see Higa on a great line, Dylan on a great line. As they transition through, he comes through the smoke. Higa starts to pull out of the zone, but Dylan actually stays back in the zone. So Dylan had two choices. He could have shored up to try and get more proximity, but instead stayed back and stayed on the proper line. Well, Higa started to push out, and I might, I'm, I'm gonna predict here, we're gonna see guys doing this a little bit more as they realize how important line is, even in the chase. So Higa through two, everything looks good, Dylan, Comes out a little bit early, gets the site, sits back in the zone, and watch Higa pull out of the zone while Dylan sits there. All right, so a, a lot between these two guys. Yeah. Not, neither the tidiest of, of the driving, but, uh, it, you know, it's it's not easy being a judge. These guys scrutinizing the each Brian. of these runs. There's Brian Eggert most closely to you. Ryan Lontane in the middle. Robin Ashid in the middle. Jacob, myself out back here. Thank you uh, for joining us and tuning in. Tell everybody we are live around the world. Round seven of the Formula Jet Pro Championship presented by Type S and AutoZone. We call this elevated, obviously, given the uh, location. So slide him left for Hughes, right for Diego Higa. Dylan Hughes gets one vote, two votes. Dylan Hughes gets the win. Congratulations to him, Diego Higa. And again, the internet blowing up here. That Permatex Optum RTV Brazilian fans, they are absolutely ravenous for their fellow Brazilian drivers. Diego, great driving, yeah. but Dylan Hughes just a little more refined there, especially on that second battle. Again, the, the first battle, that's that's one and done, but uh, we are hearing also, so Dylan Hughes gets the win. We are hearing there's a steering issue, a steering rack issue with uh, with Kristaps going off course. It was oh. not not the, you know, not the clips, but, you know, could have hit something yeah. but the steering rack. So unfortunately for uh, Kristaps Blush, Beecham will have his, his by run, and Beecham will advance on. Not the way you want to get it done. Yeah. Some great driving by Beecham and by Christoph Blush, but with that uh, with that failure there on the steering, uh, Trenton Beecham will be getting the by run and advancing on. Jacob, you called it just on how aggressive, on how good his driving is, but Beecham delivering not the way you want to get it, but he'll take it anyway. So again, Beecham will get the victory and advance on into the top 16. Beecham will be going against Dylan Hughes in our Royal Purple top 16. I have a feeling Beecham's gonna lay down a, a heater of a bye run here. I just, I know how excited he is. I know how hard he's been working for this, the struggles that he's gone through all year. Like I said, they found some crazy engine issues. Maybe on the podcast when I have him on finally, I will we'll get into the nitty gritty about what was going on, but they unleashed several hundred extra horsepower and he is figuring out how to use it and he's doing an incredible job of it. So I'm pretty excited to see what Beecham's gonna do here. I think he's gonna have a little bit of fun with it. Um, I mean, why not, right? Absolutely. Yep. And what I like to do here is lay out and listen. Lay out and listen. So uh, let's lay out and listen to uh, Trenton Beach of Clonex. This uh, LS charged, LS powered BMW. Oh, There's Dylan the Dozer Hughes is uh, Momo suited and booted. Again, that Permatex Optum RTV. Gray is the flavor. And uh, you can see Dylan, his, uh, his body language just not not content, seemed a little frustrated, maybe a little contentious there. Yeah, maybe. I mean, he's a, as much as he's very fun loving and, and joyous, and I mean, he's a great guy to be around, yeah. he is serious when he's, it comes he, to racing he's, he his, he's his own worst critic yeah, oh, he yeah is, for he sure. is really hard on himself man i mean um you got to think also let's backtrack he broke his hand right before seattle right we, we, how soon we forget driving with that broken hand um that was you know pretty tough and i don't i don't know where it's at on the healing process but um 
Simon Olsen's in. We talked about how great Simon is, but he's going to find out who's he going to be going against. Will it be, again, team captain Odie Bakshi managing all that? Or uh, RTR team captain, the boss man, Vaughn Gittin Jr.? We will find out. So as we take a look at the 2J under the hood of Dylan Hughes, great looking setup. Beautiful build. Yeah, great build. Dylan Hughes, so uh, BMW versus BMW. Dylan Hughes versus Trent Beecham, two very different setups, two very different drivers. Beecham kind of unlocking it. Again, uh, control, alt, delete, reset on uh, on Trent Beecham's setup, and sounds like uh, he's found his power glove. And love here to know we go. Stats from Pro 2. Say again? I said, love to know their stats in Pro 2 if they ever battled each other. What was Pro 2 back then? Uh, when they talked about it. Yeah. All yeah. right, here we go. Prospect. Good. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. I dig it. Here we go. Odie Bakshi is here in the field suspension S15. The second one more time. They had one battle. They had another battle. This is the third battle. They are going against each other. Odie Bakshi, Vaughn Hitton Jr. in that first outside zone. Not leaving anything for discussion. Here we go. Odie Bakshi, don't leave in the judges' hands. Odie Bakshi settled. Vaughn Hitton Jr. You can see him going to that final outside zone. 16-cylinder just banging away into that outside zone. Jacob, I see you plugging your ears <laughs> like you said. That Odie's bar, I don't, I don't know how Odie's car became the loudest. Like It's uh, its an ongoing joke with the media guys now, where wow. his car comes by and you can see everybody have to plug their ears. I think a mix of that, maybe the firing order or, or how, how it's built with the titanium exhaust pointing down, it's wild how loud that car is. So let's take a look here. As Odie goes super wide, Vaughn waiting for it, diving in, and watch Vaughn's chase, because it gets a little strange here. Odie doing a good job, throwing a bit of extra angle there through outside zone one. Vaughn almost not able to anticipate it, diving back in to two and almost shoring up and gripping up a little bit. Able to get back on the line here through the transition, but transition's a bit early. Odie going into three, Vaughn sneaking back in there, getting back on the throttle, and then getting the proximity there at the end. So Vaughn definitely could have been deeper in the chase. Odie with that little kind of waggle of extra angle there coming at a one. And uh, it's cool to see. I mean, we saw Simon do the same thing in practice. Um, both of these drivers are doing it where they're coming out of the zone and adding a little bit more style to it and then launching themselves into the next side zone or the next zone. So Simon did it in two. Odie did it in one. The cars can do it, though. They can they can hold that angle and they can dig themselves out of it. Yep. So why not? Yep. And like you said, just uh, how do you do it? Well, little little magic wand there. Shifting the gears, pulling the handbrake, many different tools within that cockpit. Yep. There's a, you saw Vaughn spotter up here earlier. They got uh, obviously a few RTR spotters. Amy Bakshi's Odie's spotter, his wife. Saw the families there, the kids. They've been traveling all over. Yeah, I ran oh. into Odie in Germany. Did you? Yeah, yeah, I was over there for uh, announcing an event there. And oh, that's right. Yeah, and Odie shows up, and I actually had no idea. <laughs> I'd heard rumors he might be coming, and then uh, next thing I know, he's tapped me on the shoulder. Awesome. Yeah, it was great. All right, so here we go. Again, our spotters, boys, ready to uh, give the driver some insight. So that sun sets, and then it just comes right into this patio. So right now, we are in full shade, but later this afternoon, the sun not only beats on us, it beats on the track, and then it goes over the, the mountain, and the, and the shadows get long. We saw that yesterday towards the end of Prospect. So the, the, the sun just absolutely shifts gears. Here we go. Vaughn Gittin Jr., speaking of shifting gears, Vaughn Gittin Jr., Odie Bakshis, for the second one more time. Vaughn Gittin Jr., Coming down the pipe, Monster Energy and Nitto Tire, Ford Performance Husky, RTR, ready to rock. Look at that first inside clip. Oh, Vaughn oh. comes out of drift. We're going to have to take a look back. Was there contact or did he just snap back? That was very quick. So Odie Bakshi does not need to complete this run. He's going to, though. <laughs> And uh, so let's run it back. What happened to Vaughn Gittin Jr.? It just came out of drift, or was there contact, and it got disrupted? But uh, here we go. Yeah, good initiation there from Vaughn. Odie, you know, holding in, waiting to see what Vaughn's going to do. And then it's right here where something happens with the RTR, and it just doesn't go. And Odie no, is, no oh, wow. No contact. So, I mean, that doesn't leave. There's absolutely no like, doubt no that was independent, yeah. unfortunately, for Vaughn. Vaughn's got the wheels spinning, but they're not going fast enough. You can almost tell yeah, it's weird. that, that it's, it's missing something. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, barely escaped couldn't, some contact. As a friend of mine would say, he couldn't fit a block of cheese between them. That is such a not a Canadian thing to say. <laughs> no. That's a Wisconsin thing to say, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cheese heads. Oh, wow. No. There's, and this is, this is the great part, right? Yeah. Spotters, shaking hands, good job, good work. 
It was a war of attrition to get through that battle. It was crazy. Yeah, spotter shaking hands, knowing knowing the defeat there. After two, one more time. There we go. Two, one more times. And Odie Bakshis advances on to 16. And guess what? Odie versus Olsen. That is a house party, but uh, somebody's going to lose. So uh, again, coming in this round, Odie Bakshi sits third in points, and Simon Olsen sits fifth in points. Odie Bakshi's 323 points. That's 40 points behind the leader. Frederick Osbo in the middle of that. So again, Chelsea Dinoff has 363. Frederick Osbo has 335. That's uh, 28 points behind our leader. And again, that does not that does not uh, count for qualifying. But uh, we are 75% uh, of the way through our Rockstar Energy Drink Top 32. When we come back, we'll have more battles. Von Kitten Jr. outside of his car. Wonder what happened. We will find out. Looks like he's talking to his guys. But uh, don't go anywhere. When we come back, next battle, Chelsea Nova. Some more RTR for your diet going against another Type S driver, Mr. Mike Power. Link ECU. We know what it takes to win pushing boundaries, performing under pressure, and having the best people on your team. Link ECU, the performance, reliability, and power to get to the podium. One bottle, so many great things. When your engine reaches 75,000 miles or more, like on this truck, years of carbon buildup leads to reduced fuel economy, increased wear, poor acceleration, and higher emissions. Max Restore is specifically designed for high mileage engines with quality PEA and proprietary detergents to remove those stubborn legacy deposits and it includes a friction modifier to reduce future wear in the upper cylinder of your vehicle's engine. Restore performance and protect your high mileage engine with Royal Purple Max Restore. Ford Star, Euro, Import, American, with bold colors and custom fitments. Your wheels, your way. Visit fourstar.com. I watched my first race yesterday. You're on the team, kid. It's orientation day. Hey, new guy. Let's get you up to speed. Lunch time. Your workspace is ready. Looks like you got a corner office. Be part of something greater. Toyota, let's go places. NGK and NTK is more than just high ignitability spark plugs and precision sensors. They're about growing the car community. This is why they're introducing Shop Squad, an automotive meeting place for shop owners, service writers, technicians, students, and industry professionals to come together and share knowledge and encourage self growth. Enrolling is free and you have access to on-demand training, digital newsletters, product launch information, and more. Woo! Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Formula Drift round number seven here in Utah Motorsports Campus in Grantsville. We're just outside of Salt Lake City. And Dylan Hughes, as Jared uh, so astutely said he thought that your body language getting out of the car was pretty frustrated and you told me that you're dealing with some understeer issues which you've never experienced before. What do you think is attributing to that? You know, tough to say. I, this track, for whatever reason, I, I've never really felt this car do that. And the GT Rado is an awesome tire. And this is something that's a little bit new for us. So last year, I dealt with it a little bit. And then the more and more grip that you put into these cars, the more that it basically wants to do a wheelie. So I'm finding myself, maybe I'm giving up on the handbrake a little bit too soon. You know, just kind of hot dogging it in, trying to drop the clutch as soon as I can to get a, to get a good drive on the guy behind me. So kind of battling a little bit of understeer issues on that first turn. And it, it's got me a little bit frustrated. So. Um, we just got to get it together and, and move forward. So stoked, stoked to run Diego. I think that that, that one more time was, um, you know, like I, it could have gone either way. You know, I was, I was like expecting to, to put it on the trailer after that. So, um, you know, hats off to Diego. He did a great job, but uh, stoked we could run it back. 
get another lap, couple laps in and uh, get it nice and clean. So just feeling frustrated and I don't, I don't really have an answer for it. So that's, that's, that's where I'm feeling right now. So just being honest, but uh, you know, we're gonna keep putting more grip in this car and we're gonna keep pushing forward and that's all you can do. So still stoked to be here in Utah and uh, having fun. Absolutely. And uh, speaking of having fun, a couple of weeks before Seattle, you were out riding motocross, you broke your hand. How is it healing now? Yeah, it's okay. It's getting a little bit better. You know, it's one of those things where it's like it, it was kind of bent over for like a number of hours as I was going to the hospital and all that kind of stuff. So I think it really upset the tendons and I think that the bone is, is healing quite well, but the tendons are still pretty upset. So I haven't ridden my motorcycle, I haven't ridden bicycles or mountain bikes or anything. So can't quite make a full fist yet, but it, it's getting there a little bit better every day. I just really didn't expect it to be um, this long of a recovery. Um, and it's just a finger, it seems so stupid. Right? It's just like a little phalange, you know, but like you really need those to hang on to stuff, whether you're riding dirt bikes, mountain bikes, or even driving a drift car. So um, no splint this weekend, but um, you know, it doesn't really hurt. Once you get going, your adrenaline takes over and you're just, you're just doing your thing. So not bugging me this weekend, but uh, still kind of surprised. It's like, it's not all there yet, which I'm, which I'm really surprised, but yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, and Dylan's just gonna have a great time and having fun and gonna reset. We're gonna have that break uh, between the top 32 and top. Lorette, did he just dab? Oh, he did. I think he just dabbed. Yep. Oh boy, oh boy. So uh, I don't know if you saw it during uh, Dylan Hughes and Lorette's convo as uh, they are cleaning up all of that aisle one there. Vaughn Gittin Jr. peeing on the track and he got flat bedded off. So that is very unfortunate for Vaughn Gittin Jr. Insult to injury, you know, we'll see him at Irwindale, but uh, the car shut down and again, put, put through the paces, you know, not once, but twice. And, and as you said, just giving it the beans, giving all she's got, get, 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 give it all she got. And uh, Odie Bakshis eventually got the victory there. So four more battles left. Next one is more RTR against Mike Power. We got Stuky in that M-Spec vehicle going against our Pro-Spec champion last year, Robert Thorne, making the jump here to Pro. Kazuya Taguchi versus Ken Shiroguchi, Sorensen, and RCP. While, while Chelsea is up next, he currently leads the pack. So uh, let's just say, he leads a pack for our GoPro chase to the championship. It's all going to come down to Irwindale. This is it. The finals are set. The lights are on. Celebrating 20 years of FD, baby. Send it. Here we go. This is Formula Drift. And we are on the streets of Long Beach for the first round. Your winner, Matt Rio. Welcome out to Road Atlanta. This is round two of the Formula Drift Pro Championship. Long Hit Jr., two-time champion. The battles that we had at Orlando, I mean, they were intense. There was a lot of contact with the inside. Whoa, are you kidding me? Look at that. That was awesome. Chelsea, the no for gets the win. This is English Town Raceway Park, also known as Round 4. Simon Olsen, Adam Elsey, neither have had a Formula Drift overall win, and one of them is going to make history. It is pro time here in St. Louis. The stage is set for Round 5 of the Formula Drift Pro Championship. The finals are set. Odie Bakshis against a new points leader, Frederick Osbo. Come on, boys, send it! Odie Bakshis initiates in that first outside zone. Osbo cutting through that smoke line. Odie Bakshis gets the win! Who's gonna get the victory here at Evergreen Speedway? We've seen five previous rounds, five different winners. Frederick Osbo is leading the pack. Chelsea Denofa, Dylan Hughes, the local boy, is going to put it down for his town. Oh, Doctor, they go off court. Dylan Hughes surges forward. Contact was made. That's all she wrote. Your winner here at round six. Chelsea Denofa gets the win. We'll see you guys in Utah. Send it.
Jeff Jones here. I'm Dylan Hughes. I'm Travis Reeder. I'm Ken Gooshin. I'm Matt Field. I drive Link. They are the most reliable EC around, and they always deliver. Their global tech support gives me the advice I need every time I need it. Their products are super easy to install and easy to set up for the performance that I want. They stand behind their products and support their customers. They're always innovating and delivering great new products and performance features. I drive, I drive, I drive, I drive, I drive Link. Well, Vaughn getting Jr. unfortunately in the hot pits and he was jumping out of a tow truck, not where he wanted to be after two one more time battles with Odie Bakchis. Um, but you said you felt a vibration in the car and what are you discovering went wrong? Yeah, uh, definitely unfortunate. I'm so grateful to be out here and, you know, perform for these amazing new fans that are out here in Utah. And um, yeah, I, I entered turn one. At the last turn chasing Odie, I started to feel a little vibration in the back and I thought it was just you know, the, the track and, and the grip of the track and just a little vibration. But as soon as I entered leading Odie, I had no drive. As soon as I went to pick up the throttle um, and let the clutch out, it just uh, nothing. So I think what happened, I think something in the differential let go. Uh, you know, this track is extremely abusive, has a ton, a ton of grip. Um, and I think with just all the, the abuse throughout the weekend. So the, the good thing is, you know, we might have learned something for the other guys right now. You know, the guys do inspect and prep the car every night, but it's been a big day, you know, the furthest that we've gotten driving in one day to this moment. So um, hopefully we'll learn something and we can find a little bit of, you know, glimmer at the, the end of the tunnel. But, you know, um, I'm, you know, I'm coming out, I'm having fun. I was driving really hard and enjoying every bit of it. And, um, you know, now it's all eyes on uh, James and Chelsea and uh, get out of my suit and have some fun with the fans and cheer them on. I love that. And so speaking of your team, of course, James Dean was the number one qualifier and he's been building this whole entire season. Chelsea Denofa is our championship points leader. Man, what do you have to say about your team? Just proud. Uh, you know, these guys and girls work so hard between rounds, during rounds all the time. And, you know, Chelsea and James, I mean, you know, we've seen Chelsea having it for the last couple of years, but James's progression to, you know, these cars are a different beasts. You know, Mustangs are, you know, our, our cars are just, you know, you see they're really fast, they work really well, but you gotta know how to harness them. And, and uh, you know, James is uh, adapted very well. He's driven quite a few different chassis and this being new. And so I'm just really proud, you know, it takes, it takes the collective to make it all work. And uh, we're just doing it. We got the vibe, smiles on faces all the way around the board. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm rooting for them. You know, I, I, would, I would love nothing more than to see Chelsea win the championship. Absolutely. So we have one more round after this, of course, going into Irwindale, and we'll see you there. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's going to be so good. Is it is Irwindale one of your favorite tracks? Absolutely. Yeah, Irwindale is one of my favorites. It's one of my tracks I've had the most success of my career in. I won the, the USA versus Japan in 05, World Championship 07. Got my first FD win there, and of course wrapped up a couple championships um, at that place. I mean, it's the House of Drift. It's the first time I ever saw pro drifting. Uh, 2003, I went out and, and saw uh, saw an event. So, yeah, it's a lot of great memories there, and uh, hopefully we'll make another one uh, in October. Yeah, love that. Well, some words from our 2020 champion right here. Vaughn, thank you so much for your time. Back to you guys. Um, you. Yep. All right. Hey, we have an update here. All right, so here we are getting prepared for our next battle, Denofa and Power. Chelsea Denofa and Power, and uh, that was some that was some great insight. Yeah, of Vaughn Kitten Jr. and and that's that's the progression of drifting where we're at, right? Just kind of the pro spec. You know, you're looking at OD team. You know, you got two in the pro, and then you got uh, one in the pro spec, and he ended up being champion. So here, we're rolling this tape because here is something pretty big here. This was, I believe, when he led, right? So what's going on here is Diego Higa has issued a protest, and what happened here is. Uh -huh. right there that is understeer by dylan hughes and he even spoke about how much understeer Laurent and him converse he said he talked about how much understeer he had diego higa and his team filed a protest saying that hey take a look at this right here you'll see the understeer it was not caught by the judges right there look at that i mean that's what, you know, the, he's, he's thrown up a bit of a roadblock there, right. and that's what Diego Higa was protesting. The judges looked at that. That would be deemed an incomplete for Dylan Hughes. The run's over, yeah. at, at, basically at that point. So what's interesting here is 
now with this, Dylan Hughes is now sitting on incomplete. Go to the second run. The call has been reversed. Diego Higa gets the win. Dylan Hughes is knocked out after a one more time battle. So the Brazilian pilot went through the necessary order of operations, yep. issued a protest, saw him come up here, came and conversed with the driver steward, Chris Yule, Sean Adriano, issued it and showed it to the judges. The judges now saw that in recourse and said, all right, see it, assess. The call has been reversed. Dylan Hughes is knocked out. Diego Higa and that JDM Supreme vehicle advances on into the 16. Yeah, this is a conversation that's been going on for a, a large portion of the year, and that is about those front wheels. And when they go straight or if they go past, you know, the kind of that zero straight mark, right. is that now still drifting? Is that now just a power slide? Are you in care and control of the vehicle at that point in time? And that is what, you know, we've had other decisions that have come up. And he goes referencing that and bringing that to their attention and saying Dylan Hughes came through. The wheels went straight, possibly opposite lock. In the rule book, that comes up as a zero. So, or an incomplete, sorry. Right, incomplete, yeah. And, 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 you know, and basically, again, what's going on right now? We got a little bit of a delay on track. We had one of the vehicles, don't know exactly who it is, but uh, spread some fluid on the track. Because Vaughn shut it down early. Don't, exa don't know exactly who uh, spread fluid on the track, but you could see... Uh, that's some absorbing material, and our crew is working to get us back onto track, literally and figuratively, as uh, we have four more battles left here in our Rockstar Energy Drink Top 32. We are taking a look. Looks like a Diego Higa's team. A little fist pump there. They're excited. And he's got to run back. He was just up here. It is not uh, It's not close. <laughs> no, but uh, but he does have some time. Ah, right, yes. he, he does get the victory. Doesn't need to complete it. We won't see the run. It's just reversed. Right. So, uh, again, with that with that being caught by uh, by his team, they protested. It's good. Don't know why he's thrashing. He knows, you know, I don't know. But... Uh, Right? I mean, I'm yeah. correct. He doesn't need to run. That's that's done. Diego's, yeah, he's up here. Uh, so, yeah, um, Diego's chilling, but, uh, again, his crew working feverishly. So, Jacob, four more battles left. Notably, Denofa, our points leader, going against power. Daniel Stuckey versus Robert Thorne. Kazuya Taguchi versus Kenshiro Gushi. And our final battle will be Brandon Sorensen versus RCP. His, uh, his name, Rome Charpentier. Yeah, a lot of great so, battles uh, still coming up. As a... As we are getting prepared, getting track prepared, getting our minds ready, getting our drivers ready. And uh, again, Irwindale will be the final round of our 2023 season. And that will uh, put an exclamation point on 20 seasons of Formula Drift. I've been there since day one. A lot of the drivers have. A lot of the fans, of course, have. But if you're new to the series, we're celebrating 20 years here this year in 2023. Let's look back at the history of Formula Drift. Ryan Sage. Ryan, we have a beautiful day, a great track. I guess it's a win-win in the way you look at it, but man, this is going to be Oh! Chris loses it! <laughs> oh, and Darren McNamara, what happened? Oh, Darren! Kyle McCorry drops the tire right there. Oh! As Millen's pushing hard, and look at this! Pushing way too hard. This corner right here. Oh! Amazing speed, and he hits the outside rear clipping Church zone. Just looking hot, 59 miles per hour. Oh! oh. All right, Grunwald slams into the tire wall.
I would like to see uh, us continue to kind of move on the trajectory that we're on and continue to sell out events, grow the drivers and their programs, grow our audience, our, our live stream viewership, all the things that are important to us as a business, I'd love to see that continue to grow. And at the same time, what's important is that people are achieving their dreams. Formula Drift is brought to you by Toyota, let's go places. Royal Purple, the official engine oil of Formula Drift, the synthetic expert. Rockstar Energy, the official energy drink of Formula Drift. Welcome back. Looks like uh, the track is cleaned up to the best of our ability, and uh, we will see our next battle. Chelsea Denofa, Mike Power on deck. And uh, again, a, uh, a call reversal there, but... Uh, so uh, quite a few contenders up in the mix. James Dean, Chris Forsberg, six championships between those two drivers. Matt Field, a contender for the championship. Dean Carney, this track is suiting his style. Would you agree? Yeah. Uh, Reader Osbo, what are your expectations there? Uh, I think that's going to be a really, really tight battle. A lot yeah. of mutual respect between those two drivers and both very good with precision and their, their follow runs are amazing. All Toyota, Turk Castro, uh, Yeah, I mean, I really think that Ryan has an amazing lead run, and any time that we see Castro drive against a guy with a good lead run, we get some amazing action. So another, I mean, yeah, just another great battle. And then the uh, the house divided here, Olsen and Bakshis. Well, Simon's got one win against Odie so far. Mm. So is it going to be 2-0, and oh, or is it going to be 1-1? One and one? Yeah. And then, you know, what happens after that? What track was it at? Uh, New that? Jersey. Jersey, yeah. okay. Yeah. So a fairly flat track. Yep. So same kind of style of driving. But uh, here we go, Chelsea Denofa, Mike Power, Denofa obviously on it. That Pennzoil RTR Spec 5 FD, two East Coast boys going against each other. Mike Power would love to see him get more seat time. That Type S vehicle loves the car. Does the car love him? You know, I, I just feel like he's, he's made the move to the West Coast. He's not getting as much seat time as I'd... I'd like to see him, and I know, you know, asking him, talking to him, uh, you know, he, I think since he's going against Zenofa, he's got nothing to lose, so he's just going to try to take down, play spoiler, literally a dark horse, yep. you know, the black S15 looking menacing, he's all tatted, zapped out, Chelsea Denofa, he's got a few pizza tattoos, we have a matching tattoo as well, Friday 13 pizza tattoo, but uh, we like, would like to see uh, just a really good battle, turn it up to 11, let's see what you got, this track really suits Denofa style. And uh, again, Vaughn said it, it's about mind sharing, you know, share, sharing that knowledge, that data with the boys. And here, you know, James Dean's already in it, number one qualifier. Denofa, he qualified third. I think they know how to run this track. So Mike Power qualifying 30th, barely getting in. So here we go. Denofa, the Penzo RTR Spec 5, FD on Nitto tires, into that inside clip. Look at that big, massive angle, pulling up that left front wheel. Hitting switches, Mike Power dropping back a, quite a bit. Here goes Denofa into that first, or excuse me, second outside zone. Mike Power taking that shallow line, trying to hang tough into that final outside zone. And Denofa just uh, putting on a clinic. I would say Mike Power is front row, but he's back there a little bit on that second. Finally gained some ground in the last outside zone. I mean, that's that's why that's why he's at where he's at, man. You can't deny that. Yeah, that was a classic Chelsea Denofa run. We've got a good mix of speed, style, aggression. This is this is Chelsea Denofa at his best. So good initiation there. We've seen him go crazier, but he knows he's got to play it a little bit safe here. Fills outside zone one after absolutely crushing inside clip one. Gets to outside zone two. Maybe comes out of the zone just a touch there. Mike Power just trying to keep up with that RTR Mustang. It, they are so fast. They are so gripped up. Those nittos just bite into the pavement. But where things can get crazy here is if Mike is a little bit slower, Chelsea's going to have to hold that car back a little bit. But you can see here what the difference is in both grip and speed as Mike has to cut a good chunk of the track just to get into the same ballpark. But now that they swap it up, so a couple things to think about here. Tire degradation. We are getting hotter. Mm -hmm. This track is very brutal on tires. We heard Dean Carney talk about it. And the cars are, you know, if Mike is a little bit slower, Chelsea's got to hold that car back. And that's not an easy thing to do. 
Mm-hmm. You know, if you've got a guy that's, you know, 15, 20 miles an hour. That's when you make you, mistakes, too. That's exactly when you make mistakes. And yeah. we've seen this happen before. So Chelsea's got to play it smart. And he, is, he has gotten smarter. He has developed as a driver and realized that he can't drive at 110 all the time because that was what was taking him out for years. Mm-hmm. And that Vaughn mentorship, you know, hey, Chelsea, take a breath. Calm down a little bit. And mm-hmm. that's what Chelsea needs to do right now. Mike Power making his way back to the star line. He'll be out front. The Type S got some Type S goodies for sale at the Formula Drift Merchandise booth. Special discounts available only here. So we got halftime coming up. Just a three and a half battles left, potentially. Danger Dan there looking on. Part of his team, a good integral part of uh, of his team. Maybe a little bit of key to his success. But uh, there's so many different components. It's Chelsea to know if his wife looking on, cheering him on. You can see Von Gitt Jr. James the Machine Dean, that RTR camp just absolutely dialed. Again, four wins out of six previous rounds, this being the seventh. That's, that is a, a force of nature. Here we go. Mike Power out front. Look at look how staggered Chelsea Denof is. That's kind of a flex right there. He might slingshot in here and just throw it right to the side. Does he need to do that? Not so much, but you don't want to leave it in the judges' hands. Here goes Mike Power initiating into that inside clip. Chelsea Nova dives on in. Mike Power comes up a little bit short there. That costs Chelsea Nova go off. There goes that bumper budget once again. Chelsea Nova probably, oh boy, Chelsea Nova going way off course. So does Mike Power. This is an interesting turn of events. Yeah. Oh. But here goes Mike Power. Oh, no. Spins out. Oh boy. It is, it is just a wow. bumper spin fest. Wow. What is happening? Okay. <laughs> so I think it, it's going to default to that first run. More than likely, yeah. Waiting for their reaction to see what's about to happen. <laughs> I mean, zero chill. This is, I mean, so it might be a little bit of delay here for these guys to good react. Save, good yeah. Save, good save. Good save. Yeah, that, that could have. Listen, listen, listen. What do y'all need? Nothing? Just make it through this round? Sorry, just uh, you, can, okay. you can hear. He says, good save, good save. Let's run it back, man. So here, I think Mike Power knew he had to go 110%. Yeah, and, and he did a big initiation there. You can tell by him rowing through the gears how much speed he tried to get. Really hits that inside clip, which we've seen has been dangerous all day. Chelsea Denofa almost looks like he straightens there. I'm sure the judges will be staring at that. And then the car has so much forward bite as he tries One, to get back in the two. zone. Oh, boy, uh, that might have been three. Left, dude. And he corrected there. And then almost opposite locks. Like, there's a lot that's going on here. But then Mike Power, Power independently, he spins out. Sorry to cut you off. but No, no, you're right. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a lot going on. And we've had, you know, some track cleanup. Do, do, are the guys going through that? I mean, I have no doubt that, that the track officials did everything to get everything cleaned up. But it is, it is just wild out there. Spike so Power a little bit shallow through there. Chelsea way too deep through there. And it looks like he did go three off. I think it will. I think it will benefit Chelsea that it won't benefit Chelsea that he made a mistake, but he got a lucky break there with Mike yeah. spinning and having that gap on him. Because if he didn't, that could have been an incomplete for Chelsea. But two independent events, it's going to default to that first run. Right. So we're sitting here waiting to interpret what's going on with the judges using. And signals and eyebrow signals and yeah. every way to communicate. Again, defaulting to that first run. That's that's my first assessment. That second run, uh, just throw that in the trash for for both Chelsea and Mike Power. That's a wash. Throw that to shred it, bro. Shred that thing, because uh, that was not a great run from either of the drivers. But great, great saves, though. I mean, that could have been that could have been a really nasty collision. And I'm glad that Chelsea saw what was going on. Mike looping it. Chelsea kind of dives off. So, yeah, um, thankful for that. It could have could have been a lot worse. Okay, so uh, the judges sitting down in their seats. Let's take a look at this here again. This is the lead run with Chelsea out front. So again, this is the first run of this battle. Chelsea initiates, Mike Power dives in. Chelsea, again, he, he, he qualified third, and this looks like a good qualifying run. Mike Power, very shallow on the line. Chelsea, filling all that second outside zone into this third outside zone. Here goes Chelsea. I mean, that's textbook. Like yeah, you said, that is textbook, Chelsea. I, I see nothing wrong with that run at all. I mean, other than just, just Mike Power 
not able to keep up. Yeah, I mean, that was just that was just overpowering. Turns his hat around like a switch. Here we go, slide him left for Dino for a right for Mike Power. And this is what I had to assume was going to happen, but I don't, you know, people call me the fourth judge. I just call it like I see it, <laughs> man. So um, unfortunately, I, I, I never say verdict, but I will obviously call a spade a spade, and that was a spade there, and that's the ace of spades for Chelsea Denofa. He gets the win. Chelsea Denofa will advance on, taking out Mike Power. And uh, again, that second run, you know, both of them kind of just blacked out. Yeah, just crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Denofa advances on. Three more battles left. High fives for the RTR camp of Chelsea Denofa. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Three more battles left. Three more battles left, Daniel Stuckey and Robert Thorne. Daniel Stuckey working his way up the ranks, making some noise, his signature uh, long hair and that ponytail. Robert Thorne, he was he was busy yesterday helping out uh, Josh, with Love. Josh Love. He was helping out Josh Love yesterday. Stuckey helping out Casey Cole. So uh, again, this is this is that sharing, uh, sharing is caring, man. So uh, here we go, Stuckey and Thorne. Which, yeah. way, which way are you leaning? Um, I think Thorne is always able to play spoiler. Um, I mean, we've we've seen it happen before. Um, you want to talk about dark horse? Robert Thorne is that dark horse. We're we're talking about a driver that has driven many different disciplines, has a ton of seat time. Mm. Um, that being said, though, Daniel Stuckey is a wild man. He will throw a crazy angle. He will grip that car up and just shoot through things. And having Casey Cole as the guy that's kind of tuning that car, he's a brilliant mind yep. in building race cars. So. It's going to be really tight, but I think the biggest winner is going to be the fans. This is this is going to be a good one. I think it's an uphill battle. I think it's a bit of an uphill battle for Thorne. He's, you know, that, that whoa, what's going on there? So uh, what I was going to say, Switches. I, hope he, I hope he tapped the brakes. Yeah. But what I was going to say is an uphill battle for Thorne. His jump from prospect to pro, he's learning a lot. And, yep. and he's, he's a traditional racer, so he's all about that seat time. He's all about that butt dyno. Here we go. So Daniel Stuckey on initiation, Robert Thorne right there, and, and exactly what I was talking about. You know, Robert Thornton goes in. Don't know if there's contact. We'll have to run that back. It's, oh, and Stuckey oh, goes off course. Stuckey goes out. Oh, boy. Here we go. All right. So as we see Stuckey finish out the course, but. Yeah. I mean, strange situation there for sure. Um, my thoughts, Robert Thorne, I mean, if you know the battle's over, save the tires, because this is a, a tire battle for sure. Um, but let's watch here on the replay. Stuckey with a little bit of a flick. Kind of a lead initiation, though. Boom. Thorne with a little tap, tap, and then he goes off track. Uh, definitely three wheels. Yeah. And then Stuckey, does he get thrown off because that's, of that's that tap? What I, that's what, that's what I'm kind of deducing, is that unfortunately Thorne got too aggressive. Yeah. He got a Stuckey, and, and once you're kind of like, oh, you, you get shoved out of the way, that's going to throw your line off. Yeah, I was going to see the attitude of the car. I mean, it almost looked like Stuckey straightened a little bit. Ooh, which see, kinda, there you go. But that was because of that collision. But that little bit of a push out is just enough to throw you offline. You can see Stuckey kind of at that two cone before they get to the second outside zone is already offline. So not much you can do there. So the judges are going to start looking about who's at fault here. Did Stuckey initiate in time? If not, and Thorne did, was it Stuckey's fault? Ah, man. Thankfully, they've got all the angles, all the replays. It doesn't matter. You know. We're not going to do anything about it. <laughs> Good job, man. Thanks. Chelsea, always the personality. I've already had the highest score. We're not going to get that today. Already had the highest score? What's he mean? No, not today. I mean last event. Yeah, let's relax yeah, on that. Yeah. You qualified third, bro. <laughs> he means last event, he got the highest, right. he, he accumulated the highest X factor and collective score of the year is what he meant to clarify. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, so um, Robert Thorne, Daniel Stuckey, and, and as you said, Jacob, you brought up a good point. Did did Stuckey kind of impede on Thorne's flow or was it Thorne being too aggressive? And that's what it really comes down to the judges as well. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. So yeah. So I exactly what you kind of put, had the potentiality of. Stuckey did slow down. Thorne couldn't go anywhere. So as we call it, it wasn't a hundred percent of a roadblock, but it was an impeding. It was a bit of a chicane. So uh, as as Stuckey again would love to run it back once again, get a replay of that, and Stuckey goes in. Got in Thorne's way. That's where the contact happened. So um, basically, the judges, if I'm correct in saying here, uh, Robbie, Robbie uh, Stuckey is at fault, 100%. Yeah, okay. so Stuckey so slows down for initiation and then almost slows down again to try and make it and, and get around that inside clip. That's how I'm interpreting what I'm being told here from the judges. Um, 
But the, the other implication here is is getting hands on Karn, who has to call timeout. So Stuki initiates, slows down again is what they're saying. There's a lack of tire smoke, um, and that's what caused Thorn to tap him, which then caused Stuki to go wide. So what Stuki we have to kind, kind of created the contact. Yeah, so it's just one of those who made the first mistake and then what happens after that. Well, we talk about that dirt, that gravel. Well, he got intimate with it, but uh, he, he said, hey, Lorette, just to clarify, Chelsea said, I got the highest score. He meant previous rounds, he's got the highest qualifying score of the year, correct? Just to clarify, you said you got the highest score, but we wanted to clarify what you were saying. No, water temp. My like, water temp is the highest score. <laughs> got it. Yeah. All right. My shake is uh, also explaining. Um, you got lucky there, to, to be totally honest, Chelsea. Yeah, it's kind of a hoping that run at the off and was going to run the clipper. So, so I have to hit him because regardless of who's at uh, two because of it because my line was so bad and smoked out from his. One or you're in trouble. Well, obviously, uh, Lorette, unfortunately, we're having a little technical issues there. Hopefully, we can get some more insight because I, I, I really want to hear that. But it broken up. Just again, the hot pits, considerable amount of area, and also I'm, be, I'm being told that uh, connectivity here, uh, due to a lot of military bases around here, oh. it, it really impedes with a signal. The plot thickens. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, always watching Wazowski. Always, always watch. watching Wazowski. <laughs> uh, so uh, we will see the second half of the Stuky and Thorn battle. Stuki, if he wanted to get contact or excuse me, get hands on the car, he would have to call his NGK competition timeout. Stuki is allotted 10 minutes to work on his vehicle, so uh, we will see. Kazuya Taguchi versus Kenshiro Gushi. Gushi again, a day one -er. We've been seeing him compete for numerous years, and uh, and here he is going against Kazuya Taguchi. So, Great um, style out of both drivers. Yep. Um, yeah, Ken obviously has the experience, but Kazuya has been picking it up. I mean, Kazuya performs super well on tight technical tracks. Mm -hmm. Ken's had a couple of mechanicals. It's been a rough year on the drivetrain and he's obviously got the, the pocketbook. He's got the, he's got the heart of the beast. He does, he does. He has persevered. Him and I have had a couple of chats this weekend, and, and he's just making it happen. So I'm not – we are chalking back and forth here. Here we go. Let's see uh, Kazuya Taguchi out qualifying Gushi. Oh, this, I've, I've, this, this is a real fun one to call, by the way. Tongue the, twister? The, it's a tongue twister. Kazuya yeah, Taguchi versus Kenshiro Gushi. Yeah. And uh, announcing with Ryan Sage before he got his tongue twisted. It's a very difficult one. So I apologize if uh, we get caught up here in, uh, in the in the difficulty Ooh. of the pronunciation of names. A lot of smoke There's here coming off Kenshiro Gushi's vehicle. Kazuya Taguchi uh -oh. running down. But Kazuya, oh, Kenshiro Gushi shutting it down. Kazuya Taguchi, he will have to finish out the rest oh, of the course. No. Smoke coming from the back of Gushi's car. At. And not the right smoke that we're seeing from Kazuya Taguchi's up garage ISR performance. GT Radial 86, the VR powered vehicle as Kazuya. I think oh. this is the first announcer's curse that's hit me, talking about Ken's mechanical issues, and then we see <laughs> what looks like potentially yeah, no a head gasket. Matter. Yeah, oh man. We, we talked about it, you know, yesterday, Ken and I had a quick chat, and kind of talking about how to get through all of it, and we had an interview on the, on the podcast, and it's, oh, it hurts. It hurts. Yeah, it's, you never want to see anybody go out no, like that. No, you can see it right here. Right there. Right on the launch. Some blue smoke. Yeah, blue and white, so it could be that's oil. Not a good. Could be coolant. Either way, it's it's Never money. Never a good sign. Yeah. Never a good sign. But what we can talk about is Kazuya yep. having kind of a free run here. Could have done a little bit better on outside zone one. Uh, outside zone two here, you can see that left foot break as he comes around, shallows up the angle a little bit, and he launches through. I like the rate right to angle. It's not super snappy. It's not crazy aggressive. But it's smooth and it's deliberate, and that's what we're looking for. A lot of left foot break there out of Kazuya Taguchi. We do know that he does much better on short technical circuits, but he's adapting quite well to the big speed, the big angle, and the you know, just the big tracks here in America. Yeah, Kazuya Taguchi, definitely a fierce competitor, and uh, and he's just gained a lot of a lot of eyeballs, a lot of notoriety from last year. You know, momentum coming into this year. Up Garage, ISR Performance, Jerry Yang Racing, and don't we have not heard is uh, is Ken Gucci retiring? Is he calling a comp timeout? 
not seen anything yet. And we are finding out it is official. Unfortunately, Gucci is calling it quits. He is done. So Kazuya Taguchi will take this by run and uh, he will get the advancement into top 16. Kazuya Taguchi, Up Garage, ISR Performance, GT Radio, Jerry Yang Racing, getting the win. Let's lay out and listen to this VR powered Japanese beast of a vehicle. Kazuya Taguchi gets the win. He will take his by run and advance on. And here is his and here is his by run taken off from that start line. Kazuya Taguchi advances on. Now as uh, Kazuya Taguchi crosses the finish line and advances on, we will revisit the second half of Stuki and Thorn. Stuki Thorn? Is that when you get a... Stuki uh, Thorn? You, when, you, when you get Thorn, you get Stuki. It's Stuki's in your side. Mm, yeah, yeah. Mm. I, get a, I get a Thorn Stuki in my foot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And after that, we will see Sorensen and RCP, two BMWs, and notably on... Uh, oh, there's Gucci. All smiles. Yeah, I mean, Gucci has such a great attitude. Saw him in Australia as well. He competed out there. He had some great runs. He's been bouncing around, man. He's a, he's a busy guy. He's such a great spokesperson for Toyota. Japanese, American, uh, just, you know, Toyota's done such a good job with the 86, the GR Corolla, three-cylinder turbo hatchback, not obviously Ken Gucci's, and of course the GR Supra, you know, just launching a variety of different vehicles, really feeding into the sport compact market and performance market, you know, between, like I said, the Supra, the Corolla, the the lineup, the you know, the the breadth of Toyota products is so extensive, um, from entry level to full world class. So it's really cool to have Toyota be involved. I mean, the GR Corolla was debuted last year at the Long Beach Round One of the Formula Drift Championship. So uh, absolutely stoked on what Toyota has been creating. Yeah, it's uh, it's amazing their involvement in the sport, and it's great to see so many drivers jumping on that program. And Ken's done an amazing job of being an ambassador and mm -hmm. promoting the brand and building different cars. And he ran the Supra. I think it was only for like. A Year. Yep. One of the first guys to build it, and then uh, yeah, the eight six, cool platform. I do like the way it sounds. I like V sixes. I know yeah. that's like controversial. It is. I, but I do like the way V sixes <laughs> sound. Here we go. So keep in mind, Stuki had that mistake, causing Thorne to uh, abruptly stop or go off course. And now Robert Thorne out front hits that inside clip. Robert Thorne to that first outside zone. Now to the second outside zone. Here comes Robert Thorne, the ASM, the Spendergard Racing Vehicle. I know the Grid Life boys are cheering on Thorne. Here we go into that last outside zone. Daniel Stuckey with that deficit. If Robert Thorne continues this cleanly, Robert Thorne will be in the top 16. Oh. Whoa! Fender on Fender crime. Thorne spins Hang out. On to her. He holds on to her, gets Rick rolling. Never going to let you down, never going to Stuckey your side, but he <laughs> will put a thorn in your side. But Stuckey uh, looks like Thorne got thorned there towards the end. I want to see Thorne's initiation, though. I, we've oh, run into this issue. Yeah, happened? we ran into this issue with Dylan Hughes. Uh, we'll, we'll take a look at it, but yeah. uh, I don't. I don't think it was enough. No, maybe not. Maybe I'm seeing stuff. I don't know. It's, it, 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 you know what? We there, get one it, shot at this. I was gonna say there is no wrong answer, but yes, there is. Yeah. Uh, but, <laughs> but but you know. Oh no, we're good. We're good. Yeah. What okay. were you thinking? I, I thought it might have been another Dylan Hughes issue where where he straightened. I know uh, that he kind of cut that clip. I just wanted to make sure. Only Stuki caught the clip. Yes, exactly. So Stuki ignore. Stuki caught the clip. Yeah. Ignore my previous statement. You know what? I made mistakes. On. I'll make them again. But uh, yeah. again, Stuki. I want to see if Thorne got a 360 in here at the end, though. He wheel did. on wheel. Let's see. Did he loop it all? He just, he, I think he looped it all the way around. Yeah. He's pulling a JTP. Bonus points. I know. <laughs> That's a Sam Hubinette point. That's oh. Sam, old Sam, old Sammy Hub used to do that. Drift your leader, dude. So a shout out to Sam Hubinette, two-time Formula Drift champion. Different eras there. What up, now? Yeah. Swedish fish. <laughs> one more, one more battle left of our 32. Um, some interesting turn of events from the Diego Higa. You know, we are we are on a Rick roll over here on our on our left side, and then unfortunately on that right hand side, the the Diego Higa. Uh, you know what? Love to see one more time. Yep. There's Stuki. You can see him tapping his roof. Um, again, just. 
Just a mistake there on entry, but look at that. The the Momo glove hanging out the door. Congratulations so to Robert Thorne, ASM, Koenig Wheels, Wise Fab, Robert Thorne, Big Duck Club, Radium. He is uh, he's advancing on, and I know uh, Jabe and uh, Chris Stewart from Grid Life and uh, Sean Fenton, the whole gang. Yep. They are watching. We're going to see them at Laguna Seca. Laguna Seca, that's going to be an amazing event. Super excited about that, um, as that will be the weekend of October 20th through the 22nd, the infamous track playing host to Grid Life. And that's going to be a festival event. Um, I've never been to Laguna <laughs> Seca. It's my birthday weekend, so we're going to party like it's uh, 2023. Maybe they're just looking back as they're pulling up to the line, maybe waving at each other. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're, they're both great guys. This this is a battle I've been like secretly waiting for. Yeah. Um, watching Why is that? What do you, what, what, what's so special about it in your eyes? So two things. One, Rome is running the engine that he ran last year just to get it in the car. Two, Brandon Sorensen's practice has been doing some interesting things between two and three, and I'm mm. curious to see if he does it again here in battle. That being said, Rome spotters I know have been watching it, so mm. that's the part I'm looking for. I don't know if he's going to do it again. I don't know if it was just something they were trying, but there was an interesting transition between two and three. So. Okay. Yeah, let's keep between an eye Between two it. and three, okay. Yeah. So that's after that big, long outside yeah. zone transition. And we saw that. Who did that so well yesterday? I can't remember. I think it was Cole Richards. Yeah. Cole Richards had some of the nastiest transitions going from two to three. Similar. Very yeah. similar. So yeah. that kind of whack and just Bingo. boom. So, okay. Well, oh, oh. we'll see. And, hey, keep in mind, RCP, he qualified with six cylinders. No. The engine, they've been working overnight to get this car running. But Brandon Sorensen, he don't care. Brandon Sorensen, high-flying Soren Sorensen, throws it into that first inside clip. RCP says, give Modern's Hell on his back wing. And that is as modern as they get there with Brandon Sorensen and LS Power. Both these guys, LS Power. Big angle from Sorensen in that second outside zone. RCP grips up, takes that inside line. There's Brandon Sorensen, the United States Air Force Pedal Commander, BMW. RCP right there on the door. Good, fauna, good solid finish across that line. So, again, hats off to the RCP team. Rome Charpentier working hard. Sorensen, again, great entry. Yeah, big, big entry. Love to see it. Rome here, it, you can tell he's driving with less power than what he's used to. He's having to scrub out some angle. Rome is able to adapt and overcome no matter what situation. Years of doing that, but he might have straightened there in two. And this thing I was talking about there in three, you can almost see it. It wasn't as snappy as we've seen before, but the car kind of transitions right on the nose. It's almost like he's left foot braking into the transition, stomping on the throttle and bringing the car around. But you can see here as they come around, inside clip one, Brandon Sorensen does a great job. Doesn't get all of outside zone one. As they come into outside zone two, though, gets on the throttle, holds the car in. We don't see a ton of left foot braking, staying super smooth. You see that transition, like I said, just, just kind of in the front end of the car is where it's pivoting. Gets into three, a little bit shallow there. Could have done a bit better in Rome in the chase, but you can tell he doesn't have all the horsepower he was hoping he was going to have or had right. before the engine went out. Well, and, you, and you said it, man, just, you know, taking taking that old heart of the beast, putting it back in. Confidence is a little questionable. There's Stuky and uh, Thorne. Oh, that's cool. Again, smiles all around, man. <laughs> he's doing pretty good. Reading lips. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's not bad. He beat me. You know, I'm sorry, but I mean, we'll, we'll see you in Irwindale. And I'm going to go make a sandwich. You know they're both apologizing. Yeah, sorry, sorry. sorry. Yeah, oh, They're sorry, not Canadian, dude. No, no I know, don't but, lump, <laughs> Don't lump the apology. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Sorry, eh? <laughs> Let's see. Rome Charpentier, he will be leading Brandon Sorensen giving chase. Thank you so much for joining us. Remember, we're going to take a break in between 32 and 16. Local time, 2.15, so just over an hour. So at 3.30, that's a short break, man. That's what's, that's what's really great here. We'll get you home before dinner time or, you know, kind of a, a little late dinner mm. because uh, last night we ran a little bit long. We had a 30-minute delay there. Let's see. Hey, I recognize that beanie. Me too. Oh, oh boy, here we go. <laughs> I know you, you're giving those out to some yeah. fans, right? Yeah. If, uh, if they see you, you got some stickers and some beanies, that's always awesome. Man. So I love that. That's so you give them back to the community. Love it. Here we go. RCP, Rome Charpentier, Garage Stick, BMW E36. It says give Modern Tell. That's what Brandon's staring at right now. And uh, Rome's going to try to give it to him. But Sorensen, let's see if we can get to the side of him. Rome Charpentier. Want to see that different angle? Oh, there's a perspective I'm looking for. So Rome into that last outside zone. And Rome looking a lot more comfortable out front. Yeah. More confident out front 
didn't want to kind of do anything risky in that chase position, given that, you know, again, that engine being swapped out. But I think uh, I think Brandon did exactly what he needed to do here in this chase. Love the initiation by Rome. Love the dive in and that that kind of whip around. Brandon doing a good job though. Probably understanding his spotters are. I mean, Mike Kojima's a spotter, one of the greatest minds in drifting. And Rome, you can tell, is just struggling. Those Vitor tires are super grippy and super aggressive, and they've probably done everything they can to get the car where it needs to be. But that being said, Brandon playing it very smart, very mature for his age, and just playing the correct game. Rome, on that initiation, you see some inputs with that front end. Comes through the first outside zone, look great. Bit of a hesitation before coming into two. Back on the throttle, comes out of the zone a bit. But you see Sorensen doing a good job behind him, trying to stay in the zone, making sure his lead looks great. I think the drone almost tapped the car there as they come across the line. Rome, war of attrition. Like I said, that Rome, Rome will do whatever he can to get back yeah. into the battle, and that's what he did here. Absolutely. So, slide up left for Sorensen, right for RCP. And there it is. Brandon Sorensen gets the victory. He advances on into the top 16. Our top 16 is set. Jacob Gittins, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for joining us again. Be sure to check out Outer Zone Podcast. And uh, again, some great insight. You asked the right questions. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. I, I've absolutely loved it. It's been an absolute honor. And for my wife and kids watching at home, I'll be late for dinner, but I will get there. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you again, Jacob Gettins, uh, my co-host here for Top 32. There is the Top 16. Again, be sure to check out Outer Zone. Outer Zone. The, not Otter, Otter Zone. Zone, that's a different, yeah, that, different one. big yeah. Otter fans yeah. out there. Uh, let's check out Outer Zone, uh, all things Formula Drift. But that's our top 16. I'll be joined by President and Co-Founder of Formula Drift, Ryan Sage. He will be here with me for top 16, and that begins at 3.30 local time. So it's just before 2.30. That's what time. I got a dentist appointment right now here at 2.30. Uh, but we'll be back here at 3.30. So hopefully we got all our fillings filled because uh, guess what? It's going to be sweet. So here's some sweetness for your diet. Tune in this afternoon, local time, 3.30. So again, about an hour and 13 minutes, we will be here. Back at it like a track at a Mr. Black Magic. Shout out to my boy, Killer Mike. We're about to kill it out here on track. Who's going to get the win here? Round seven. This is Type S Elevated, presented by AutoZone. Get in the zone. AutoZone. Auto zone. Thank you so much. We'll set it here at 3.30.